Yep, Charlamagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back with another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Uh, Hezzy. What's up, baby? How was your weekend? How was your week? How you feeling? Bro, I've been having trouble breathing, man. What? I think anxiety's playing tricks on me. Either that or COVID's back. COVID might be back, bro. What you mean? Like, you been having a real respiratory issue? That gotta affect you, especially, you know, being I think it's anxiety, on stage and shit. man. I think it's stress. What you stressed about? You selling out fucking stadiums? Yeah, you're right. I, I shouldn't be stressed. Marriage? No, marriage is great. What is it? I don't know, man. I don't know, but I, I wanted to talk to you about it because you have these, uh, you know, so much uh, experience with this. Have, have you, you ever had that where, like, anxiety made it, like, feel as if you... It was, like, hard for you to get a full breath. Hell yeah, that's the whole point. That's what the anxiety yeah, is. Yeah. You feel like you're having a heart attack, you got to take a deep breath. Bro, I felt, like, pressure sweating. on my chest yesterday. Knees weak, arms spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Arms spaghetti. <laughs> you know I was vomiting on his sweater. What was you doing in that moment? Um, I don't, nothing. Your therapist will tell you to, 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 to recognize your environment or... Box breathe? What are you, you thinking about? What's box breathing? Uh, you go down on your wife... And uh, you're laughing, but that's true though. <laughs> when you get when you get anxiety, no, the, the first thing, at least for me, I want to do something for somebody. Ah, you know what I mean? A lot of times that makes me please. feel better. People please, yeah, which is something that I've been I've always struggled with people pleasing. But mm. I, I would I just feel like I want to do something good for somebody that makes mm. me feel good in that moment yeah yeah okay so what do you do when you feel that like struggle for breath and i know it's just my brain playing tricks on me yeah but like it's have, so weird you're you're inhaling but it doesn't get to that 100 percent mark yeah that's the only way i can describe it yeah I have, and, yeah i have an affirmation i have one affirmation that i've been saying my whole life since i was a kid before i even knew i was dealing with anxiety and shit like that so i would say uh i love jehovah god and his son jesus christ i'd say that three times and i'd say fuck satan three times and then as i got older and actually started doing real meditation i say my actual mantra so that's what i do in those moments i actually say my my mantra and it really? just it brings me back to center absolutely mm, that's cool mm. you should try the uh huberman breathing techniques yeah Two inhales, like and then a hold, to... and then an exhale. You probably right? only need one. <laughs> Bro, I did think that my nose is too big because there's this Navy SEAL box breathing technique where you do inhale for four seconds, yeah. right? And I'd be like, okay, and I'd go, and one second would be done. See what I'm saying? But I had no more air to go in for the rest of the four seconds. I was like, God, maybe I do have a big nose. I can't even do the box breathing. Now my anxiety is even worse. Because they never a, developed a breathing technique for people with nostrils as big as mine. But you know so <laughs> I, I'm asking Maybe you, that's why you also had it, that bunky nose that or whatever. Bunky nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna ask you, I, I asked you, but what is the reason? But there is no reason. That's why it's anxiety. Yes. There's no fucking Yeah, I think reason. it's just a bunch of different things from that's all different all. angles. But but I never had it to the point where I felt like the breathing was restricted, and I can see how that would just further induce the anxiety. Yeah. Sometimes uh Sometimes slight cases, not slight cases, imposter syndrome can make you feel like that, mm. which, which, I've, which I've actively been fighting against because we deserve it. Yeah, we deserve we it. We deserve it, man. We deserve it. We deserve it. it. And you got to tell yeah. yourself that sometimes. I am worthy. I deserve it. I, I am him. I am him. I am Ooh, him. I am him. Yeah. That's the truth, though. Like, sometimes you got to tell yourself that because you'll, man, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just be like, man, life is trippy. Life is trippy. And sometimes man. life can be so trippy that you'd be like, is this real? And you'd be like, yeah. Yeah. It's real. I have an idea, I think, of what it might be, but I have to tell you off the podcast. Okay. Okay. But uh um, the haircut, the looks you get whenever you get a fresh a no, fresh bro. shaving of the sides. But I got I had a funny joke about this. <laughs> but I can't talk about it. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, anyway. Where so, do we begin? So um, that- tell me, tell me, tell me, what's going on? Wait a minute, no, there's been a lot of things that have happened this week. And there's been things that I've been excited to talk to you about in the news. The first thing that came to my mind when I walked in is like, yo, Hollywood really might be in trouble, yo. Oh, that was it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hollywood, yeah. Oh, Hollywood. no, and Chris, we found out Chris's limes was an experiment from the United States government. Really? You're a mutant, Chris? No, he is. <laughs> lime man? <laughs> He's lime man. <laughs> You're lime man, Chris? Yeah. Lime marine? <laughs> Literally, the Lyme disease was created on Plum Island, which is right across the water from Lyme, Connecticut. 
And I think it was created as a bioweapon originally to like take down cattle or whatever Never knew that. in Russia. So America made Lyme disease and, and fucking now Chris Russians, is, yo. The Russians are always behind some shit. No, no, yo. we did. To take oh, we down take down Russia. Russia. During the Cold oh, War. oh, got you, got you. Yeah, just and then another, what Russia gave us lemons. Hey, hey, hey! Just another disease that the United States government has created, huh? Huh? Ancient history of Lyme disease in North America revealed with bacterial. What's that? Gnomes? See, I don't even like looking at this. genomes. Genomes. Nah, that's some bullshit. You still got it, Chris? Chris, say where it was made. Made in uh, Plum Island off the coast of Long Island, directly across no. the Long Island oh, yeah, Sound yeah, yeah, yeah. from uh, Connecticut Lyme, well. Connecticut. Yep. Uh, that's why it's called Lyme disease. That's why it's called Lyme disease. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Um, Keep talking that shit, though. Keep talking that shit. I mean, look. <laughs> Let's get the episode demonetized right off the jump. <laughs> Keep talking that shit. U.S. bioweapon. <laughs> U.S. bioweapon. <laughs> say what it is, bro. Well, listen. If what you, do you mean? They created a lab? For a bioweapon, right? For animals. And they named it after the city, right? They well, named it after, they named the city it after that Lyme, it was Connecticut, because in the late 70s, mid 70s, I'm children. just saying, is there a lab in Wuhan? I'm, ju- I'm just saying, is there a lab in Wuhan that studies coronaviruses? Is that also a thing? So, nope. So Could no- the same thing have happened twice in history? So, no ideas original? Nothing new under the sun? Nothing new under the sun. <laughs> 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 Wow! I mean, the land of the rising sun is Japan, but it's, it's close enough. Right? It's close it's enough. It's close enough. Yeah. We're yeah. cooking over here. Do you know what I'm saying? We cooking. Damn, Chris. <laughs> Damn, Chris. Man, he can't get away. Damn, he got both Chris. Yo, Chris is the Damn, only one. He's the only. What if? Whoa, 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 whoa. What if? He's he's the daywalker. What if Chris is the daywalker, bro? What if Chris is the yo the fucking U.S. government is trying to be trying to take Chris out for decades? Oh my bro. god! If it's not Chris. Lyme disease ain't work, so now they cross Corona. Damn! What's Chris. next, Chris? What's next? What's on the docket? What's on the menu? You know what, <laughs> what they serving? Come on, Chris, talk and to does us. Does it come with a fortune cookie? <laughs> 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 Fauci cookie? Oh, Fauci cookie? Oh, shit! Chris is in! Oh, shit! Yo, we got Chris oh, on the dark shit. side! Chris is on the dark side, ladies and gentlemen! It's officially happened! Fauci. The reason of this podcast, the logic, the brilliance has been stripped away! He's why, a victim why of Why is Fauci. Fauci getting the blame now, Chris? Why? I don't, think you, can, I don't think you can Fauci pin... Fauci opened the lab! No, he didn't. You can't pin the lime on him. God. You can. You might be able to pin the not lime. Head. Not lime. The lemon, lime. definitely. But definitely the lemon. <laughs> well, this is. This is what you could probably say. Probably bird flu. That was probably him. <laughs> Yo, real talk. It was probably him. That was. That was. E. coli. E. coli. If I was the city or country. That that shit came out of, I would push back on them naming it after us, yo. You're right though. Why would you want that? Like nobody's gonna get a home in Lyme, yeah, Connecticut, Wuhan, or Wuhan. I'm like, don't, don't, you can't call it the Wuhan. Imagine whatever. you just bought your re- retirement property in Wuhan. You know what I'm saying? If I'm Lyme, Connecticut, I would, I, I would, I don't even want to drive through Lyme, Connecticut now. Well, that's one of the theories why it, it might you, be true. Because listen, think about who Lyme disease is affected. What might be that true? it could have is resulted? Lyme disease, does Lyme disease not affect Jews and uh, Chinese? Chinese. Uh, I'm, I'm here to say that it does. Yeah, you're both. Right. Yeah, My kids right. are good on uh, COVID, but we're, we're susceptible to Lyme. But think about it. Who, who does Lyme historically has it affected the most? I have no idea. Tell us. Whites. Wealthy white people along throughout Connecticut the Hamptons, wealthy places where traditionally those are the type of people, if there's a medical emergency, what happens? The government gets involved, they correct it, they fix it, they come up with cures. So it's curious to me that if you look at this as a disease that has traditionally affected very influential wealthy people in America, nothing's gotten done. Damn. And why do you think that is? Well, the argument would be because the government doesn't want you to look too closely on where it originated from. Ooh. Mm. So is it a bioweapon to take out the, the, the 1%? What are you saying? I thought it was, a, someone told me it was a bioweapon to take out like the cattle population in it was, Russia. It was created to destabilize, in theory, we don't know what happened, but yeah. it, the theory would be it was created to destabilize- The Soviet Union. The Soviet Union way. enemy, you introduce something into their population or their livestock population, which destabilizes the country. Mm-hmm. 
either intentionally or accidentally, it gets out of this testing facility in the Long Island Sound, makes its way to the mainland, Lyme, Connecticut, and then spreads from there. They've always said that about Texas, too. They've always said that the next pandemic is going to come out of one of those uh, meat factories in Texas. A one meat of those factory Or the cow Texas, factories, whatever the fuck. What do they, you know? the be- butchery? Butchery, there you go. Uh, meat market factory in Texas. farming. Meat market, yeah, yeah. I, I was about to say, I said meat markets, but whatever, in Texas. Meat factory in Texas, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, Everything's it's bigger in Texas. I ain't moved to Austin. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, I'm just saying, did you see Salma on National Bikini Day? No. Oh, my God. Tom Hayek? Oh, my God. She had the bikini on? Oh, my God. Pull it up, Alex. It's it so might quick be to pull one up Lyme disease. <laughs> T, can you pull that? Yeah. Now, while you go get that, can you tell me why you think S-E- it's over for Hollywood? S-E-L-M-A. H-A-Y. S-A. S-E-L-M-A. I think it's spelled H-E-A-V-I-E-S. Oh, I knew you were talking about that. Selma Hayek is funny as hell. Selma Hayek was marching with Martin. Martin was distracted. Oh, Selma Hayek. Just got it. Just got it. Uh, Maybe that's why he kept marching. He goes, no, I'm telling you, they up there. Oh, that's some. Oh, that, that was. I didn't see that National yep. Bikini Day. Yep. No, 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 no. That one right there. That's a fifty-plus-year-old woman. Nah, Salma got it. She been had it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's she got it. That coquito don't spoil, boy. No, it don't. <laughs> nah, no, it don't. Nah, nah, nah. Salma got it. Salma yeah. been There's had. There's a it. new expectation for fifty-year-old women, ladies. I just want to let y'all know. Man, There's a new expectation. Not even just fifty-year-old ladies. Us too, man. Like your guys are aging very well now. But like, we always did. <laughs> Nah, not I, I saw Sanford and Son, bro. You saw it uh, all in the family. Archie Bunker was 37. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> he was. <laughs> Archie Bunker. There's no Archie way. Bunker was. Wow, Salma. God damn. Wow. I mean, that's nice. That's 50 something? Wow, go ahead, Salma. Do your yeah. thing, do your thug. Thizzle. Go ahead, Salma. So you can tell Salma works out, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm, I'm sure she eats right. You know, and I mean, and she got access and resources to things that we yeah, don't yeah, have. Don't, 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 yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Why you trying to hate us? She got yeah. access to resources, but she also access to fucking a gym. chicken and rice. Sure. She got access to that Mexican diet that y'all Absolutely. don't have access to. But you, she's look, defying physics right I'm looking now. at that fit picture. <laughs> That's that's a well. She's in shape. Like she you can tell, she works shape. out. Yeah, man. Yes, bro. Yes, like. Th- but you know how many quinceañeras she got to go to? You know how much horchata she got to drink? There's so many things that she got to go through. That's that what they, I'm saying. The average person does not. Like, look at the waist. Like, uh. like the weight of waist. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Too. That's amazing. Wow. Simon. Also, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, Simon wanted them one. Anyway, tell Simon. me why you think it's over for Hollywood. Because they look great. Hollywood look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood look amazing Simon from, from already, this man. view. Um, I think that uh, I think Hollywood's in trouble because there's been a lot of smoke and mirrors in regards to screaming services. I think that the reason a lot of these screaming services, you know, don't. Well, first of all, let's take a step back. When it yeah. comes to the actors and the writers, the actors and the writers they want a piece of the residuals when it comes to screaming, right? There, but there are none. There are none because, uh, number one, there's only like two screaming services that are actually in the black, and that's uh, Hulu and Netflix. But also... I don't even think Netflix is making money. No, Netflix is. It is. It is. Netflix, Netflix is in the black. Netflix is in the black. Netflix and Hulu. Everybody else isn't. But well, Someone looked that up. I don't no, think Netflix is making they're, they're like the only two. I, I, I just read about this. But the, and it's not, like, it's not like they're making profit over profit. They're just in the black. But the reason that I feel... Um, that's never going to happen as far as them getting a piece of the residuals of the screams is because if these screaming services ever really opened up the books and were really transparent, Wall Street would be like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm-hmm. Now explain. It's not, because it's, no, it's not real profit being made. Like we know a lot of these networks, they get more subscribers, which causes the stock shares to go up. Right. But that don't mean it's actual money. And when you in. say Wall Street, you mean investors. Yeah. So, like, the average investor, if they found out that I, every streaming service is losing money, I don't think Netflix is making money. I think Disney makes money. No, they're not. Yo, Disney spends so... You know how much Secret no, Invasion no, no, no. costs? Not Disney Plus. Disney, the brand. Oh, yeah, I'm just talking Netflix. about the streaming. Yeah, Forget but the-, the streaming... Disney Plus isn't its own uh, stock. 
Disney Plus is part of the Disney stock. Yes. So but, if you're investing in Disney and it's still profitable, you'll be good. Whereas Netflix is its own stock. Yes. Hulu is part of the Disney stock. The Disney stock. thing, yeah, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So Netflix is by itself, and if Netflix is, is itself is not what is called in the black, in the black means a profitable business, right? If Netflix is losing money, in the hopes to continue to eat up market share, which is what Uber does, which is yeah, so absolutely. what so many of these tech platforms do. They just go, we're gonna keep spending money and burning money in hopes that we'll eat up enough market share that then we'll be bought out or we'll be uh, yeah. profitable online. For example, Amazon, I don't think even is profitable. I think they take all their profits and reinvest Amazon it into might not business. even be in the streaming business this time next year. Amazon. They don't have. Why do they have to continue to do original programming when it comes to TV and films? That's not even their primary source of income. Well, I think that's what allows so them. fucking toilet paper. Toilet paper. I think that's you what, what I mean? allows them to be doing this. Right? They can compete so well because they don't have to make money on their streaming. But I can't platform. waste money either. I can't keep dumping money into the streaming platform, doing all this original programming, and, and they, not getting no ROI. They, they waste money. What well, the ROI is culture. I think Amazon and Apple will be out of the screaming business soon. I think before Apple gets out, it would buy Netflix. That's the other or thing. Or Paramount have, Plus. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, think Paramount I don't think, Plus I don't, is I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Paramount Plus is the easier property. Uh, Apple buy. is the most successful com company in the history of the world. Maybe too. Disney. Maybe Disney buys what? Maybe Apple buys Disney Plus. No. Maybe? No, 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 because I think that... That's been one of the rumors. Hmm, I, I don't think that Disney, I, I think Apple could potentially buy Netflix, but I don't know if Netflix has enough intellectual property that's valuable in order for it to happen. They got all the intellectual property. Yeah. Netflix is the only people that's still cooking right now. Netflix is over in Korea shooting movies right now. They're doing TV shows and shit right now. Like, what, like the, the strike is happening, it's affecting here in America. No, but I'm talking- Netflix still cooking overseas. Yeah, no, I'm talking <clears throat> about intellectual property, meaning like, so, so what Amazon have is, I, I'm pretty sure Amazon bought MGM. So they have their whole back catalog for movies. Mm -hmm. So they have the ability to remake any of those old movies, right? Which is a very old popular IP. thing yeah, that's yeah, happening. Yeah. So they have so much IP. Not only do they have the old IP in terms of the movies, every time those movies get licensed abroad, every time those movies get licensed by a Netflix, Netflix goes, I want to re-up on uh, Backdraft or whatever the fuck thing is. And they go, okay, you got to pay us a fee. And this happens globally all around but Netflix the world. got that too, though. Because Netflix got a lot of old IP. Like, people never, you never stop watching shows on Netflix. You're just always finding new shit. True, but they had so they had to license all those old shows. Like they had to license Friends, they had to license uh, Seinfeld, and now what's happening? Well, they got their is, own shit though, like Orange Is the New Black, House of Cards. Like Netflix got a lot of Squid yeah. Game. Yeah, but I know you can't really compare those to like Friends or like Seinfeld or like now, other legacy shows. Yeah, yeah, their yeah, yeah. goal is to be able to build that up, but it takes years. Yeah. And they've had a few incredibly huge successes. They have had the Stranger Things, etc. So hopefully they eventually continue to build those things up. But they don't yet have a show that you just turn on and. It's in the background, and it's Not just shit. making syndication rights like a Seinfeld or a Friends <clears throat> did. They have some great reality shit that's really successful, like Selling Sunset. You just throw that on the background. The difference with exists. Netflix, though, is Netflix is literally worldwide, and Netflix isn't necessarily a streamer anymore. Like you go, you can be anywhere. Netflix is on remote controls. Yeah, you know, you know, know what I'm saying. They did like Netflix they, is in hotel rooms. They were first. They yeah. did a great job. There's no question. And they, not only were they first, they fucked the game up. They fucked the game up so much that they made everybody run to say, we need to be in the screaming business. Yes. I don't think that was ever a sustainable model. I think there was supposed to be a Netflix, and then there was still supposed to be cable television. But I think cable TV jumped out the window and was like, you know what? We need to be in the screaming business yeah. too. I think the, the, the game was really only designed to have two screaming services, Every, Netflix and Disney. Everything mm. gravitates towards convenience, and cable television just wasn't convenient enough anymore. So the, this is just with the internet, it's just with Uber, it's just with everything, right? It's just the more convenient version at the same price. We say that until some dope shit come. What was your favorite show? On what? On HBO that you just loved. It was convenient. I just watched it whenever I wanted. What, House, on, House on, of Dragons on, or what? what, what no, what, what was the one you was, the one you used to like based off a of video game or something? Uh, no, oh, no, oh, no, like, uh, uh, the zombie show, uh, Last of Us. Last yeah. of Us. And that's used to come on what every Sunday. Yeah, but I could watch it whenever oh, I want. You were watching on demand. Yeah, yeah, you oh, okay, watch, you stream okay, okay, it. Okay, yeah, okay, you stream okay, it whenever okay, you want. That's you, the you, thing. You, I you, do you. agree with you hundred percent. And this is what Apple's doing, which I think is brilliant. They're releasing shit weekly now. 
They're like, we're not yeah. gonna let you burn through this content in one fucking weekend and then the show's done and we gotta keep on making more shit to keep you happy. I said that so last year. If, if, yeah. if, if your point with cable is stagger the shows out, you're a thousand percent right. And the subscribers. Keep going. Wait, what do you like, mean? Like when people pay for cable television, like put it like this cable television is a model that at least you know how much I'm, you pretty much know how much you're gonna make, right? The streaming business to me is kind of like a Ponzi scheme in a way. Talk to me. What, what? Because it's like, Okay, I, 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 I launch a screamer, I launch a screamer, the screamer comes out, and in my mind, I'm like, well, how much could this necessarily make, right? But you don't necessarily know what those subscribers will equate to. What, what those, well, no, you know how much you're going to spend on content, right? But you don't know how much they're going to make. You don't know how much you're going to make. Well, you know how much you're going to make once they subscribe. Once they subscribe. how many people are going to subscribe. Exactly. But that's the hope with any business, right? You're just like, I got to start the business. If I open a coffee shop, I hope that a lot of people come buy coffee. You hope. But it's a lot of hope and screaming. That's all I'm saying. It is a lot of hope. But I will say this. Cable was more more of a tried and true model that they kind of blew up. Like, why did they blow? My point is, why did they blow it up? It was a tried and true model. That showed it had worked for years. It wasn't convenient enough and people stopped watching and then they gravitated toward Netflix and YouTube, which were just more convenient. You could watch things at your time. I wish, I'm with you, but I think they jumped too fast. I really I, do. I well, think why that, do you say this? Because I think I, Netflix I, made them jump too fast. I think people saw what Netflix was doing and was like, we need to be doing what no, they're dude, doing. What they, they wanted to hold on to cable for as long as they possibly could, and they had contracts in place to hold them there. The problem was nobody was watching the shows. Mm-hmm. The ratings in our lifetime... Shows that would make 5 million, 10 million viewers drop to 1 million or less. But just give it a minute. All I'm saying is if they would have just gave it a beat Mm. instead of everybody just running to start the streaming wars. If you give it a beat, you let Netflix get even further ahead than it it was already. Listen, I'd rather lose market share to Netflix than everybody else. now Because right now, there's nobody winning except for Netflix. Even right now in 2023, none of the streaming services are in the black except for Netflix and Hulu. None of them. Did we find out if Netflix is profitable? It is. It's profitable. It's profitable, but their overall profits, and I'm seeing different numbers, have declined since last year. Yeah, so that's lost. why Wall Street's upset. They're still making billions. It's just moving in the wrong direction. And, and they lost a bunch of subscribers uh, last year. But I'm telling you, the only reason that is, is literally because I feel like everybody just jumped too fast trying to follow Netflix's model. If everybody would have just waited to be to your point and the point I've been saying, HBO, every week you put out a dope ass show like Euphoria. Motherfuckers is tuning in. That shit you okay. was just talking about that's based off the video game. Last week, every yeah. week people are tuning in. I only got to do three or four of those a year. So I People think, like Netflix got to constantly put out product. I think what you're trying to say is that it's not that we should have kept cable. You still want to be able to watch your on show demand. whenever I'm with that. on demand. Yeah, yeah, I'm with that. So, in other words, I'll give me both. So, yeah, but what I would say is have a streamer, just have shows come out 10 o'clock on Sunday, which is what cable did. There's no advantage to just cable. There's no advantage to just running television all the time that nobody's watching and then having your advertisers bail and then having no ads up and then not knowing what to do. Like, well, they don't have ads on. Cable on HBO. On cable, they do. That, what on cable they, television. What's going on right now? They're talking about HBO, like they a, have ads a on premium HBO? channel. Premium. Oh channels yeah, the premium channels. You might as well have it streaming because it, it's the same model. I've never seen a commercial like, my whole life. I've never no, no, seen no, no, no. But a premium channel like HBO, Showtime, Cinemax oh, yeah, is like about. a streaming yeah, 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 service yeah, yeah, already. Yeah, but that's what I'm, I'm talking yeah. about. Those networks. I'm not talking about like fucking regular cable television. I'm talking about like the premium. Yeah, guys. like I, I think the premium guys going to streaming just made their content more convenient. Mm-hmm. So like. If HBO, do I want to watch what HBO tells me to watch on a Saturday night if I'm just home for a movie? Or do I want to look through their entire catalog and then pick the movie or TV show I want to watch? That's more but, convenient to me. me. That's both. always going to win. Give me both. Yeah, but Charlotte, if, if there's no streaming. I mean, they're doing that now, really. But like, say if HBO didn't have a streaming service, half the people wouldn't watch Game of Thrones. Nobody's getting a cable channel, I mean, a cable package just to be able to watch HBO. That's not, I don't know if that's true. Bro. We always, we always so used to. Our generation we, does not have cable. We always used to get cable packages. Yeah, like, but no, this, but I'm and telling also, you. Also, to your point, it's still something about appointment TV. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to go back and watch it on streaming services, but when everybody's on a Sunday yeah. at 10 o'clock tweeting at the same time, there's no experience like that. There's I just no, think you should have both is what I'm simply saying. And I'm letting you know there's no show that's that good that people are I going to buy a cable service, subscription service, like cable, 
get a box in their television. I, I, uh, disagree, I disagree with nah. that. Because you can even see it when, and, and, and you can see it when, when I th- star, I, I think, star, you can see it with stars. I, I think stars what, does it with power. No, 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 but. They, they're, they're just, you can look it up. They, it shows when power is not in season. 50 Cent talks shit about this all the time. When power is not in season, stars lose the subscribers. But they're, they're also digital subscribers. Yeah. You could mm-hmm. do the app. I, I, there's just a miscommunication here. Mm-hmm. What you're saying is you believe in the streaming model. Yes. You just you just think that shows should be released weekly because it's a more uh, it's a better for the network side. It's a better return on investment. Yes. Your show lasts for eight weeks or 12 weeks. One show that you pay for lasts for 12 weeks instead of lasting for one weekend. And then yes. you need to get them new content oh, later. Okay. That's I, what you're saying. I, I yeah, think yeah. that's, we're on the same page. Yeah, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm also saying, I feel like everybody jumped out the window too fast trying to chase Netflix. And everybody, sometimes you sometimes you got to let the person go over the hill first. Well, so and let them take the bullets and the arrows, then figure out <laughs> how to come over the 100%. hill without taking so many bullets, so many arrows. So, uh, I, okay, now we're on the same page. I think you saying like, we should have go, should go back to cable through through everybody off. I think what you're saying is going binge culture is jumping. Yes, mm, binge yeah. culture. And listen, Netflix was smart, right? You in order to uh, catch fish, you need to stir up waters. What stir is stir up the, water to catch fish? Okay, how do you stir up waters? How do you create chaos in a new in an in an industry that's already established? You give people the whole season right away. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. Now, what are the advantages of that? If the show is not as good. I will stick around to watch it because I have the next episode ready to go. Yeah. If the show is not as good in the traditional weekly model and at episode three, it's kind of, eh, I'm not coming back Sunday. Yeah. I'm not building my whole Sunday around this fucking show schedule. If it's binge worthy, what I've always said about a lot of the Netflix shows, they're not as good because they don't need to be because all you need to do is leave me on a cliffhanger. I'm tuning in yeah. to that next episode that's going to come right up. So they stirred up the water to cast fish. All the other networks came in and tried to compete. And now they're realizing, the smart ones like HBO, smart ones like Apple are realizing, oh shit, we don't need to give these motherfuckers a new show ev- the, the whole season immediately. No. We can give them a new show every week as long as that show's fire. And because you produce less content. And low key, if I'm them, I go, I would assess the show and I'd go, oof, this show is not that good. Let them binge it. Yeah. And if the show is fire, you go stretch it out week by week. Listen, if I if, if I if I only got to do three to four shows a week, and you got to do 27, 28 a year, you know what I mean? And I think we all forget what where everybody was at before they had their own streaming flat platforms. They were on <laughs> Netflix. They had their content on Netflix. They were doing licensing deals. So think about this: companies like Disney were getting paid from Netflix, because Netflix was doing licensing deals with these companies. They all said, nah, fuck that. Let's take our content off, start our own platforms. Worked for some, didn't work for a lot. Mm. Out of all of these streaming networks, you mean telling me only two of them are making a but profit? I will say this. And Hulu got the best model, because Hulu got like four or five different channels But no on one knows shit. what Hulu is. The problem with Hulu is nobody knows what the fuck it is. We saying that, but they in the, they in the black. I don't know why. <laughs> well, they, they run ads. Yeah, they run ads. I just don't know ads. what they are. Like, de, like they got I, ABC on Hulu, FX. FX is on Hulu. It's like cable, ESPN but is on also Hulu. streaming, but also got their own things. Like, I, I was in a movie on Hulu, so it's like they also got movies. Like, the, Hulu movie is was you so. On Hulu. The white man can't jump. Oh yeah, too. yeah, I watched it. I watched it on Hulu. So yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. there's so many different things that are happening on Hulu that it's just confusing, and I think they have that a brand works. issue. If it works, it works. I can't criticize if they're doing well. I just think that people don't really know what Hulu is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, do I watch yeah. cable on Hulu? Yeah, I do I watch I its own show? Like, what is I it? I watch it all. I do. I watch it all. I just think Hollywood, Hollywood's in real trouble this time because I don't see how the writers and actors win this one because I don't see how it behooves the Hollywood studios to meet any of their demands. Because I think when it comes to the writers, you're going to have a couple people who cross the, 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 the picket line. And like I said last week, it's called whatever week I said it, it's going to be like a showrunner, a head writer, and then AI, at least for a while. Not saying that's going to be the end all be all, but at least for a couple of years, they're going to at least try that shit. And when it comes to the actors, I just don't see them ever being transparent with the actors as far as how much these shows are really screaming because to be transparent with the actors, you gotta be transparent with Wall Street. So and exactly. they don't wanna be transparent with Wall Street. So there's so in order for the actors and the writers to calculate 
a comparative, comparable uh, syndication value, right? It used to be there'd be a show that's really popular, like a Seinfeld or a Ray mm -hmm. Romano show, right? And then they would sell that show in syndication once it made 110 episodes. That means you could sell it around the world. You would see it coming on five days a week on like Channel 11 or wherever the fuck mm -hmm. channel it is where you grew up. I think where we grew up, there'd be like Channel 11, right? And they would just play the reruns of- uh, All the network channels. All the network it. channels. They'd have five, seven, Beverly nine, Hills, 90210, yeah. and they just play them all day. And you make so much money on that syndication rights. Now with streaming, the streaming network owns it in perpetuity. So what they've been doing is paying a upfront syndication fee. So they go, yo, Will Smith, we want your movie. Here's 20 million. That includes your syndication fee. So I think the writers and the actors are trying to go, let's find a realistic syndication fee and let's find a realistic version of how much this show is worth based on how many people stream it. Music did it with streaming. They have a per stream fee that the one artist gets. One difference with that. Well, real quick, just to finish okay. out the point. So with syndication, like to what you were saying, the, the streaming platforms haven't been forthright about how many streams these shows are actually getting. Yeah. They say number one most streamed uh, show on Netflix or number one most streamed but show on Apple. But not giving up them exact numbers. But they're not giving the numbers. So without the numbers, you can't calculate the value of the show. That's right. Especially the value of the show to the network. And without the value of the show to the network, you can't calculate what you're worth as a writer or what you're worth as an actor. That's right. And to what you were saying, since so many of these networks are dependent on the stock valuation. That's right, and not actual profit. And not right. the actual profit. They don't want to say how few people are actually watching the show or how many people. Because Wall Street will... Wall Street it will go either tank or they'll find out that the entire network is only watching one show, i.e. Stranger Things, and then every actor on Stranger Things is going, back up the truck, motherfucker. Yeah, if yeah, nobody yeah, yeah, watching yeah. nothing but Stranger Things, we're keeping your fucking streaming service alive. We need the bread. Yeah, the, 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 everybody keeps you know trying to talk about the music industry and the, the TV, film industry. Yeah, the what, is the, what do you see as a totally difference? Totally different because Tidal... Apple, Spotify, they're not paying to make the albums. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the Netflixes and the Disneys and all that, they're That's paying to make these point. fucking products. Like, they did. It's totally different. Like, Netflix, Title, and Apple is damn near all profit. Like, all they got to do is make a proper split with the labels, not even the artists, just the labels, and poof, keep it moving. So it's almost like, yo, actors, writers, make your own shit. Make your own shit, Boom. we'll buy it from you. That's and then the you will accept, yeah. and you know what? Yes. That does happen, and you know what? Those people That's who, the play. but those people who do sell accept the fee, and they're good with it. Yeah, that's the play. If yep. and, 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 and you can do it two ways, right? You might shoot some shit for three, or four million dollars, sell it to Netflix or Disney for 20, 20 25 million. There you go. Or you might say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna, but I want to get this percentage of it. You know what I mean? Well, what what but percentage? Because let me, let me let me get my production money back. But right? what percentage? Because you're not making any, yeah. there's no money to be made. You're servicing the streamer. The streamer gets their monthly revenue. You, probably have to, you might have to sign an NDA. You might have to sign an NDA and be like, look, all right, we do a deal. You shot this for how much? Five, 10 million? Okay, you you'll get your, how you'll get your production money it? back. Yes, yeah, right. But you got to sign an NDA. We'll let you, we'll, we'll, we'll be honest with you about what the numbers are. They're never going to be. They never, never do. That's too risky. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think. Hollywood might be kind of fucked in a lot of ways. I saw the dude uh, that plays Incredible Hulk, Mark Ruffalo, he said this yesterday. He was like, yo, he started encouraging people to go do independent films. I think that might be the wave. Well, I look out for Tubi. Let's go. Y'all been laughing let's at go. Tubi. Look out for Tubi. Let's go. Tubi, Tubi might be the guy or the girl, whatever my, the fuck. My only thing, um, my understanding is they can't work on independent projects. Like, they can't work on a project that if you're sad. They, if they're gonna sell it, yeah. You, so it's like, how can they do that? Bro, I don't know, Here's bro. The Here's the thing. And I'm sagging in WGA, and I'm just simply saying I don't know. I don't know where this ends, bro. I saw in a variety. They're like anybody who sag at WGA. The things that you have to boycott are live appearances. And I said, I'm crossing the picket line. Yo, so that makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> by the way, by the way, pull that up, Alex. Please. I'm going. Mm -hmm. On stage, pull, motherfuckers. Pull that up, because nothing on that list makes sense to me. Y'all don't make my living. I think I, hold on, I got that right here. That makes no, why wouldn't you want the actors to make money while the strike is going on? 
Like that makes zero sense to me. Hold on, I got they that just, shit No, right they now. don't want the films to make money. But I'm not promoting the films when I'm doing they appearances. They assume that you are doing live Look appearances at this shit. to promote the films. Tours, personal appearances, interviews, conventions, fan expos, festivals, for your consideration events, panels, premiere screenings, award shows, understand that, junkets, podcast appearances, social media, studio showcases. How am I supposed to make any extra income? <laughs> what if I'm an actor who hosts a podcast about food? I can't do my fucking podcast about food? What if I'm just getting paid because I'm me? Forget the show I'm doing and the character I'm playing. Mm. I'm getting paid because I'm whoever. I can't go make my money? Like you, you really think um, I, people want to see Rua Zendaya? Yeah, this sh this should be. Shut up, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, no, 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 no. I think that I think that one variety's wrong. I heard a, a bunch of people respond to that, and they're like, "Variety continues to not know what the fuck they're talking oh, so it's about." None of that's true. It's. I think it's. It's like somewhat true, somewhat not true. I, there's nothing wrong with us podcasting. There's nothing wrong with me going on tour. I think some of that has to do with promoting current projects or past projects. We've had a lot of actors and actresses that was on Breakfast Club, that was scheduled to be on Breakfast Club the next two weeks. All of them had to cancel. Because they can't promote their films. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. But we have a podcast that is not based on sag after. It's about nothing. nothing. Yeah. It's just if you're working on a project, that's a SAG. That's a SAG project, project. you can't do. Yeah. Exactly. Shh. I don't know how this ends, man. I don't like it. I think. Well, I think what's really interesting is I think that the, the music, sorry, sorry, the film industry and the TV industry much like the stand-up comedy industry. Hmm, how do I say this? For years, doing stand-up specials and like filming these like grandiose things, right? Like, and don't get me wrong, there are certain people where they should be that big. Like a fucking Kevin Hart should have that kind of spectacle. Absolutely. But for newer comics, they were spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to do these specials for comics that like people didn't even know who they were yet. And what we kind of figured out is we could film our own specials and get even more people to see it by placing it on YouTube, mm -hmm. a place where people could see it. Mm -hmm. So we kind of caused this disruption in this you know, traditional industry by filming stand-up comedy specials for a fraction of the price and focusing really on what people wanted, which was great comedy, comedy, not this insane production value. And then when you do eventually get to the upper echelon of comedy, yeah, you should go do that. But we disrupted the industry in that way. I think, and I've been trying to figure out as I've been doing these films, what the next level of disruption for the film industry is. Mm -hmm. The film industry is, don't get me wrong, for a Mission Impossible, for Avatar, for all these big fucking films, you need these huge scale budgets, et cetera. And Mission Impossible didn't even do well. But regardless, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is you need them. For an indie film, I think there's a version of making, people are saying, yeah, an indie film is for $5 million. I'm like, there is a version of a film that is far cheaper and we can find a way to do it for far cheaper. And then when you do a film for way cheaper, you can put it in a place where more people will see it. Right, And then when more people see it, you can find out ways to monetize it in the same way that we did you know, with stand-up. I think direct-to-consumer is, is always going to be a great model if the consumer gives a fuck about you to want to direct with you. Y'all know what the fuck I just meant. <laughs> yep. I, I, we got it. I agree. And I, and I think that storytelling is going to be at a premium. I think if you have a great story, you can shoot it for much cheaper and you can make that film for a fraction of the cost and then put it in a place where people can consume it and then have way more success. And I think that restructures the film industry. We just haven't seen people do that yet. Yeah. yeah that's a little bit harder to do only because a film does take a lot more hands to make. And to be able to compensate people in a way that they can have a yearly salary they can sustain themselves on working project by project is just harder. That's why also, you need the- Two things though, two things. I can put out my comedy for free and then monetize the road. Actors don't have that. Yeah, They yeah, have to yeah, make yeah, their yeah, money yeah. off of films. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have to generate wealth, but if you can, one, condense shooting schedules so that actors can do potentially more projects. Like you can film, right now it's it took two months to film Oppenheimer. That's Oppenheimer. You're telling me you can't film a indie, low budget, really creatively put together project with great storytelling and an amazing story. You can't do that in half the time as Oppenheimer? You know what you're gonna need for that? You're gonna need the people behind the scenes to have the same 
enthusiasm Dedication. at the people in the front of the camera because yep. they're going to be having to take some losses, right? And you may not want to when you're behind the camera because that's a whole, that work is way more intensive, right? That's and, and, what, and what benefit is it for them? Because if I was, there's none. these people that are on, that, that are striking right now, because the people behind the scenes, I'd be sitting around calling my folks like, yo, we should be putting together production crews. That's illegal. We feel, really? Right now you can't do anything. Can't write. Shit. You can't yeah. write. Writers can't even write in their free write. time. So even if you do like some, even if you do like some, uh, uh, you form your own production crew. You can't even go shoot some shit. Nope. Damn. They can't. If they're under the union, you can't do it. Fuck. Why are you telling me that? They can't. They I can't. want to act like I didn't know that. They can't. My boy. They uh -oh. can't. Yeah. <laughs> think about. Yo, look. Did you see the numbers for Secret Invasion? What Secret Invasion? I didn't see them, but Secret Invasion is fucking phenomenal. Great. What is Secret Invasion? But nobody's uh, watching it. Uh, on Marvel. It's Marvel. Based off of Samuel L. Jackson's character. Nick Fury, but no, Alex, you know nobody's watching it. I don't even watching know what it was out. I, I watched that shit religiously. Six episodes, how much do you think six episodes of that shit cost? I think it was like 500,000 or some shit like that. 500,000? I thought, I, that's what I thought the budget was. $277 million <laughs> for oh, no, no. six Per episodes. episode, I think, was like 500,000. Well, no, no, 500 million. Over budget, the final tally came in at 211.6 oh, million. Wow. Guardians Shit. of the Galaxy, the movie, had a production budget of 250. Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania had a budget of 200 million. This is a TV show with six episodes. But keep in mind, it's six episodes. How long is each episode? An hour. No, so like four, like like 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Right. So we're talking about six episodes of TV. So that's between like five and or four and six hours. So let's say it's about five hours. It's two movies. So it's two movies. So they basically they made two Marvel movies. I'm with you, but it's still TV. Oh, it oh I agree. You know it's saying? loaded. But they still, like, the still got to treat it like TV. Yeah. No, Bob they can't. Bob Iger and he's chopping everything. He got oh, he, the gifts oh, he, oh, he don't oh, give a fuck. Oh, he's fucking shit up right now. But if they treat it like TV, the production value isn't going to be as good, and then we won't like it. That's the that's I don't why think we TV. need production value as much as we need story. With Marvel, with shit that is Even with CGI, Marvel. you need good production value. I, I'll be honest with you. I think it's story. And I think that one of the things that... To be honest, one of the things that Guardians of the Galaxy shows, like there are moments in Guardians of the Galaxy where you're like, this is silly and weird and that makes no sense. Like large swaths of the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Not even that it doesn't make any sense. You're like, did they put any money in this? But it doesn't matter because the story is so compelling that we're going to lock in yeah, and just yeah, believe yeah. this reality. I agree, but you can't have a whole series just well, with Bob a good Bob you need, I think that's what in the, Marvel you need some Bob some Biden shit exploded. said he feel like Disney TV has done too much. Oh no, Kevin Feige said this. One of them said this. They feel like they've done too much with the TV stuff, and that's why everybody has fatigue across the board. Because Guanamania didn't even fucking yeah I know. do what it was supposed yeah. to do at the box office. I don't even know what it is. Ant Man. I think a lot of people after Endgame kind of checked out. Can I? Yeah. Can I be honest? Okay. Here's the, here's the reality of the matter. Endgame finished it. Not, no, no, it, For the casuals. No, no, no just, just, just take this in. Endgame, Endgame was Tough the to Super Bowl. Yeah. It was the World Series. Yeah, man. It was the NBA Finals. Yeah, Tough act to follow, yo. Summer League is what's going on right now in Marvel. Yeah, yeah. And the diehard fans of basketball are watching Summer League. They're seeing Wembenyama. They're seeing Scoop. Yeah. They're seeing all these guys. But the casuals could give a flying fuck yeah. what's happening in Summer League right still, now. They're spending Super Bowl money but in the they, Summer League. That, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We out here. Listen, listen, listen. We do our best. We do our best. You know what I mean? We did our best. Listen. So they're doing Super Bowl money for Summer League, but if they adjust it to Summer League That's money, it. then it. they can be okay. Now, here's the problem they're going to have. They have to build up a new reason to create... 15 years from now, another version of Avengers which Endgame. Are, which they're currently doing. Which they're currently doing. But we dealt with 50 years or 70 years or whatever the fuck it was of comic books that built to yeah, Endgame. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't a 15 year run. It was 70 years yeah. of X-Men. It was 70 years of Iron Man. It that was 70 true. years. Like, we knew these characters as if they were like the Statue of Liberty. They were like bastions of American culture, and it built up to this final fucking moment. Endgame was a world war, literally. Yeah, man. And now we need a break. You can't have another war right after a world war. It's like, yo, we settled all that. 
I don't think they should have yeah, did no Marvel yeah, TV show. They can't. They can't take a break. They gotta figure something out, and it might not be going back to Marvel. That's it. boom. I'm about to say. I don't think Wait. they should do. I don't think they should have did no Marvel TV shows. I think maybe this is the phase where Disney should have just invested in the Star Wars or something. Maybe I don't know. They maybe did. Go back they to that. Put shit. all that movie, the yeah. money in the Star Wars. No one yeah. watching. I don't think they should have did no Disney TV shows. And I think the next saga we should have saw for Marvel was the mutant saga. All in film. Now is the time to out the to roll out the mutants and What's all that mutant? other shit. I mean, What's that's because now that they have Sony. Well, now that they have oh, like Fox, Sony. Let me tell you yeah. something, Charlemagne. That was your fucking greatest idea. Mutants, you mean X Men, right? Yes. Yeah. Start from the jump. Yes. Yeah, Start from the jump, up. and then take an off-brand mutant like Iron Man. Iron Man was not the number one. No, not at all. Take that off-brand version, That's whatever right. the fuck it is. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Beast. I don't care if it's whatever. You make that person the centerpiece That's of right. this new world. Hover all the characters and then build towards your fucking end game. That's right. And take us on that dance for 10 fucking years. I mean, they are doing that, but with both, with Marvel and with. Focus on one. Focus like, on one. Suck. I think, I mean, the, the, the as a person can, who loves that shit, I'm tuned in. I love it. I'm just, from a, listen, as a fan, I love it. Yeah. But as a, from a business perspective, this shit is a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. And but wait, you know, are they starting with the mutants from. from? No, they just started. They started to get from some ground zero? What's Ground uh, Zero? Well, but they can't because they were putting out X Men movies. It's not like X Men we, movies weren't coming out. We are so fine with them putting out more. You know how many Superman they put out. You know how many Spider Man they put out. Just restart it. We, how many times have we seen Uncle Ben die? Well, they gotta blend the world, so yes. they're doing it right now with the multiverse. You know what I'm saying? And they introduce Earth 818, and all the mutants are clearly on Earth 818. So eventually, it's gonna be an incursion where both worlds crash together. Yeah. Deadpool's gonna bring a lot of that together, from what I saw. That shit looks phenomenal, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> like they, because he. Did Deadpool is the person that can break the fourth wall. Deadpool will probably end up saving Marvel because he can talk to the people. He can tell us everything that we already know is going on. Mm -hmm. Like, did you see the fight scene with him and Hugh Jackman? Yeah. And the 20th century Fox logo was behind him. Yeah, so fine. Deadpool's just going to go back and kill all these motherfuckers, all those old-ass whack characters. Yeah. This shit's going to be, oh, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. All that's whack characters. Like, like all the old X-Men movies all the old and all shit. that shit like that. Oh, He's going to go back and kill them. So is there the reset that you're talking about, they're going to actually show the reset via a movie. Yeah. Which is smart. All right. I, I love it. Remember but I do agree with you. Yes, it's not the smartest business model, but I think they're just looking long term. It's like also, they're making a lot of money with amusement parks, uh, figurines, all that type of shit. Are yeah, they do. Can I say they, one more thing? Are they? They make way Disney more money. still in the <laughs> Disney just Disney had to cut like five point five billion. They fired mad employees from Disney Park. That's why ES that's all everybody. those cuts at ESPN was because of Disney. Like they firing motherfuckers. Yeah, but that's everybody. Every company had a bunch of layoffs. Okay. I don't know, man. I think COVID, oh that, that was my other reason too. COVID fucked up a lot of shit. Like Hollywood's still recovering from COVID. And now they're just getting hit with this. This is just strike is another pandemic. Also, there's another thing that's going on, which is like all the streamers were bloated during COVID because people never had, they didn't have anything else to do, so they just yeah, watched yeah, shows. Yeah. So the stock price skyrocketed. It probably went up 30, 40, 50%, whatever it did. So it's really regressing to the mean. It's regressing like where it should be, but it looks as if these companies are all failing. So if Netflix drops 30%, it was 30% inflated. Yeah. It should come back to yeah. a normal version. But again, we look at stocks quarterly, so it's like, oh my God, this is a horrible quarter. What yeah, can we do? Yeah. You could never sustain that growth. By the way, do we need all of these streaming services? Do we need all the channels either? No. No. They'll consolidate. Eventually, it will just be it one. It have to be. It's going to have to. Like, I think it's going to end up being two. I think when, it's, when the smoke is clear, Netflix, Disney Plus. Yeah, but you forget people have egos. And the leader of this streamer is like, nah, I'm in the game too. I'm going to keep going. I don't, I don't give a fuck how much ego you got. Nah, Eventually, just everybody got somebody to answer to. Everybody got a board. I don't give a who, who your CEO is. There's a board. And the board going to be like, Nah, motherfucker, we just lost a gazillion dollars. Shut this shit the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Like, eventually, I don't give a fuck. You can have all the ego in the world. If that shit ain't making dollars, it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right now, it ain't making no motherfucking dollars. Uh, what we got, man? What else we got? Oh, that, sorry, one more thing. Uh -huh. They need to stop with this multiverse shit. This shit sucks. It's too confusing. Let me just say it. Let me just say it. <sighs> Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me get it out. Let me get it out. It's the best. The for, <laughs> for the people that are really in it, like you guys, it's really exciting. The casuals, it's 
linking too many things that they're unaware of. So it completely ostracizes the casual viewer who just wants to tap in and be like, I know about Spider-Man. Spider-Man Multiverse is a bad example. I'm talking about the true, the traditional Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm. It ostracizes the, cas- the, the, the casual who's like, yeah, I grew up with Spider-Man. I know yeah. he got his, un- his aunt who's kind of whatever, and then they got carnage or whatever. Kind of what, the other. fine? Say what? Kind of fine? I'm kind of fine. The yeah, new yeah. one. The new yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Shit. Yeah. I'm shooting webs. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. So, so, so it just completely ostracizes and just confuses them. And there's an education process every time. You're like, what do you mean the multiverse? Da, 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 da. And then you just check out. The super fans like you, it satisfies every inch of your craving. But keep in mind, when you're creating movies for the masses, you gotta create you, it for the casuals. You gotta no, create it right. for the casuals. You, yeah, right? but then you run into the DC problem. DC problem where they were just telling the same story over and over well, and over with different. Well, stories are bad. That's the problem with DC. Isn't Tell the, Simple the same and plain, story Alex. is fine to tell. They're just bad stories. Simple and plain. DC sucks. Yeah. DC, DC don't films really suck. They do. DC stands for dick and cocks because they suck. Because they That's suck. That's how bad the they films have, are. They have a worse, bad, and average, but not all of them suck. The, da- the Dark Knight movies were good. Um, that don't count. Those were classics. You what know, you the Christopher mean? Nolan that, shit? Yeah, that's that wasn't part of DC. DC. That's Christopher that Nolan. And why were they, they were great because of story. But I mean, it's still good. It's still part that of the DC. Part, no, that wasn't part of the DC universe. So it's Batman. Batman's DC. Yeah, but they, that's, that's, that's not part of the DC <laughs> universe, though. Be, that's because the whole shit they tried to do with Justice League. I'll never forgive them for introducing Justice League in a fucking email. They rushed that. They rushed Justice League. They got introduced in email attachments. You were right. You exposed that to me. I didn't. They, I didn't. It's the stupidest they shit ever. They rushed Justice League way too fast. Like email yeah. attachments. Watch, show. you gonna see this. This dude who's going over there to do it now. What's his name? Um, James Gunn. James Gunn. He is nice with story. I don't trust James Gunn no more. He lied to me about the Flash. They told me that the fucking Flash was the greatest superhero movie of all time. Wait, yeah. he made the Flash? No, he didn't. No, they make were it. trying to hype it up. Yes. So I think big my, flop. By my, the way, my theory. Big flop at the box office. My theory. They were trying to hype it up because since he was coming to change the whole regime, he's like, "Hey, if this one does good, I can at least keep one old character from the old shit. So let's pump this up and convince people that this one's good." But now that this one flopped, they're gonna have to recast the Flash, and now he has to like try to build that whole storyline. Well, they're gonna again. recast the Flash anyway because no, 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 they said if this this one did good, they were gonna run it back. They were oh, gonna I believe that, yeah. and they protected Ezra Miller. They tried. Oh, they tried. Listen, he can't say he didn't get a shot. He did. He got a shot. Yeah, he he got a shot. But people was like, nah, we ain't fucking with you. We not fucking with you. Um, salute the Hove, man. The GOAT. Uh, the Book of Hove. I think any creative should go to the Brooklyn Public Library. I don't give a fuck what you're into. I don't even care if you're a creative. If you, even if you're not into the arts or anything like that, if you're just a person who's looking for some inspiration. You know those American dream stories that we talk about, like somebody going from rags to riches, somebody going from just the bottom and being successful in what they chose to do. By the way, that can be anybody. And you don't have to be a billionaire rapper to choose to do something and be successful at it. You might want to be you know, a custodian and you decided, hey, I'm gonna be the best custodian and you that was your dream and you chose to be that and now you're the Greatest custodian in your town. You might have a custodial business. Whatever it is, go to that book of whole shit, man, and see it. You saw it, Alex? I haven't seen it yet. No. Oh my god, you should go show. Inspirational it. yourself. Oh my god, I was, was hating. I saw you and Weezy at the um, the opening. Oh, the day before man. the opening for the VIP motherfuckers. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, you know what it was. Did Taylor go get to go? How did you? Wait, you got the wait, invite? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got the invite? Hold on. Go. Hold on one second. You got the invite go, in the go, go in the, uh, go. <laughs> go you got the, the actual book? Go, go in the mic. Go in the mic. I have people too, connections too. Hold on, so you got the book? No, I don't have the book. I said I could have went to the opening. Nah, not if you didn't get that book. <laughs> I think I think you're talking about like the first Friday. day. Friday, you're talking about Friday. Friday, but Thursday before it was, Thursday. before it was open. My, yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe if she was with somebody. I just know if you had that, you got to have that. Wait, you trying to say she's a plus one, dude? <laughs> Where, <laughs> okay, I'll be a plus one. Nah, <laughs> there's nothing wrong. <laughs> Weezy was a plus one. I'm snitching. Fuck that. Yeah, she was plus <laughs> one, plus one. Is that wrong being a plus one? Uh, hey, there's nothing wrong with being a plus I one. I would have loved yeah. to be a plus I'm one. I'm just saying the invite was fine. It was actual book. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that really fine. flipped the game on me just right there. <laughs> the game was we shitting on Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> the first second I, 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 I shit. my toe in the goddamn water. Y'all, like, hey, by the way, be a by the way it, it don't matter if it's a private event or public event. You can go see it. It don't matter whether you was there Thursday or Friday. That's just foolishness. Like, it don't matter. It don't matter. Like, he has the little that smirk sh- face on. That shit don't matter. <laughs> why, why you went Thursday? Yeah, yeah. If it don't matter. Cause she was invited. No, no, I, I went Thursday because I know I probably would never go when it was open to the public. Just the way my hands are. No, fuck it. Listen, no, just the way my. I would have gone with you. You should have just said That's you got invited, Charlotte. Damn. No, I'm honest. You know, I put on my sunglasses, yo. This guy. I did get invited. I want to talk to him. There's, there's, there's not, there's not too many people that can get me to come out. To do some shit like that, and that Rock Nation is one of those people. Just because, like, Rock Nation Especially is at nighttime. It was actually in the daytime. It was daytime. It was a daytime event. It was from like six to. I, th- I thought you knew. That's a, I thought you got invited to. You got I invited did, to the but she time. went to. The nah, it was five to. It was five to eight. Yeah, it was okay, like well, they arrived later though. Then, <laughs> so. Who? My friends arrived later. Who was your friends? You met her. At the thing. She works at Power. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. But anyway, but I'm just saying, like, you know, it was a great... I'm just saying, if you want some inspiration, man, go see it. Jay-Z deserves... Why was everything. it so inspiring? <sighs> just seeing because, somebody come to... Be, no, because the, the, the greatest flex that Jay-Z has for me is his evolution as a man. Mm. Forget the... I ain't gonna say forget, because you can't forget it, but otherworldly talent... Fantastic entrepreneur and businessman. But I think that we take for granted the fact that his plane did not necessarily have to land with the wheels out. Because 2016, 2017, whatever that was, when he was going through everything he was going through in his personal life, Mm. we don't know which way that could have went. You know what I mean? And how do people look at him six, seven years later if that all fell apart. Because at the end of the day, for me, as a 45-year-old man, I measure men based on how their house looks now. And to see the work that he put in as a man, to be a better father, to be a better husband, to be a better friend, that's his ultimate flex to me. And I think that this library, you kind of get to see that in real time. Like if you've been following the story and paying attention to his music, of course you know it. Yeah. But when you get to actually see it play out through pictures and videos and everything else, it's like, damn. And ultimately, you know, being there that Thursday, there's a documentary that they show. It's like a nine minute mini movie that they show. And they, it starts with his grandmother, Hattie White, who's from Batesburg, South Carolina. And then shows her, you know, moving to uh, New York there in Marcy. But then her kids start to have kids, and that's Jay's generation. And she was, you know, basically taking care of them off twenty dollars a week. You know what I mean? And he was like, "Yo, well, how, how do you how do you take care of us off twenty dollars a week?" It was like, "Well, twenty dollars can get you a lot back then." But to see all of that, and then to watch it full circle, this man being celebrated and honored, but his grandmother's still alive, and his mother's still alive, and they're there with him on that Thursday. To me, man, I don't know what's better. Like, what else do you want? Like, what more do you want than to be celebrated and to have that in front of your family? Like, the people that you genuinely love. You got your wife there and your your daughter there, your people that you came up with. Like, what's what's, what's better than that? Mm. And and I, and I, and I I hold him in such high regard just because of how many people I'm watching crash and burn because they're choosing to lead with ego, because they haven't done the work on themselves, because they haven't healed that trauma and that grief and those things that exist that can ultimately cause you to self-destruct if you don't go do that work. Who, who are you? Uh, I, I, it's, no need, I, it's no need to name names, you know what I mean? But I mean, all you gotta do is pay attention, look around, you know? Just pay attention, look around, and you'll see it. You'll see people who aren't, aren't in that space, and should be. Cause they grown, <laughs> you know what I mean? You can look and see the people who, you know, don't have the, the family structure, don't have the, 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 the wife and everything. Like, cause that's important too. That's the other thing too, bro. You got to have a good woman, yo. Mm. You have to have a good woman. And when you get a good woman, man, pour into, I keep telling y'all this shit, pour into that woman, like really pour into that woman and watch how your life just does this. Mm. Pour into your woman, pour into your family, do the work on yourself to be a better man and just watch how your life 
does this. And that's what I see Hove doing. And I think that's very, very, very um, impressive, hmm. at least to me. That's his biggest flex to me. Right, when we, did you see Braun the other night when he was on stage oh, yeah. with his wife and his two sons and his daughter? That's, that, that's, that's your greatest flex, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't never, you, you can never say anything bad about that. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Nothing. Then you turn around and tell me that you're changing your jersey back to 23. Now I got to talk to you different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I'm not talking to LeBron the man anymore. I'm talking to LeBron the player. Okay? Wait, break that whole thing down. I missed that. I don't word. even know what I was just saying. Yeah. What I was trying to say is yeah. <laughs> he's changed. I was just trying to switch the subject. He's changing oh. his number. To <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, wait, no, wait. but that was also a good metaphor. It's like, don't live in the past. Just, you know, keep going forward. Well, the only reason I don't think LeBron should be switching his number back to 23 is because I think 23 should be retired all across the league. You said what? He said, I guess he was trying to do that for six, for Bill Russell. Well, who six just should have been retired, too. So both of them should be off Yes, the there's some numbers that should be retired across the league, bro. Bill Russell, number six, should be retired across the league. I don't know. You got to stop, Alex. Generational thing. <laughs> but he, he, Generational thing. He can read. No, but I nah, mean, like... you don't read that. <laughs> no, 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 I can't. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't believe in retiring numbers because it's like just let somebody carve out their own thing. Like some people say LeBron's better than Jordan. So it's like people are on drugs. That's true. But I'm saying, I don't know. I don't think you keep all numbers in there. I don't think you can carve out. uh, I think you make it harder to continue to carve out your own legacy when people still think you're chasing Michael Jordan. That's true, so it's on that person to not pick a number that has that much clout attached to it. Yes. But at the same time, you keep retiring numbers. Now it's like, damn, who's not really who's worth being number being retired? Because you're gonna put Bill Russell, you're gonna put Jordan. What about the Magics? What about the all the other players that are great? I think you have to elevate the game of basketball in order to get your number retired. Not to be a subjective. great player. I mean, that's... Bill Russell, I think, elevated the game of basketball. Michael Jordan elevated the game of basketball. I think a lot of people would say that about different players. It's really uh, it's, not, it's not too many. It's a short list. To me, it's a short list of people who actually elevated the game of basketball, who took the league to another, another level. Larry Bird would be in that conversation, I think. I think what Larry and Magic did together changed basketball. What Michael Jordan did changed basketball. What Steph Curry has done revolutionized the game of basketball. No, because Kobe's Michael Jordan. What about LeBron? See, like, I think... He can't be I think it. a lot of people would say LeBron does. Hey, but he should have had his own number. He should have had seven. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, he should have took God. That's God's number. Yeah. What's a God to a king, mm. you know? Yeah. Michael's the God. LeBron is the king. Mm. If you want to be a God, you should have took the God number. Facts. That's just my personal opinion. All right, Taylor. Damn. Damn. I mean, she's producing. Damn. Around. Thank you, Taylor. Shit, Taylor. Taylor. That's exactly what. It, thank you, Taylor. Uh, let's take a break and pay some bills. Priceline. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. You can see yourself there already, and it's glorious. And now, think of your summer happy place: the sun, the sand, the big city, or the town that you just explored. We all have a place. My summer happy place. Y'all already know what it is, man. Anguilla, baby. AXA all day. I just was there uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, love Anguilla. That's where I'm gonna ultimately retire one day. I think either there or South Carolina. But I love Anguilla. Moral of the story is Priceline wants to get you there and help you travel to your happy place for a happy price this summer with deals you can't find anywhere else. My travel secret this summer, Priceline's VIP program. It's free to join. All you need is to sign up and book a trip. They have savings on hotels, flights, and rental cars with select deals you can't find anywhere else. That is a fact. Every trip gets you closer to the next level and unlocks even more benefits. Plus, you can choose up to five members to add to your VIP family so that together you can bundle your trip and unlock savings even faster, okay? Who would you add as your VIP family member, Schultz? You. Who would you add as your VIP members, Alex? You. Visit Priceline.com slash brilliant. Not idiots, just brilliant to go to your happy price 
this summer. We also got to thank Molson Cause for sponsoring us, man. Some is when you get to be your real self, right? So cool off with the only spike lemonade that has real fruit flavor, simply spiked. Everybody don't like the hard liquor. Everybody don't like beer. People want something that got a nice fruity flavor, spiked Simply Spiked is it, okay? Simply Spiked Lemonade, ready to drink Spiked Lemonade. Broke the internet when they dropped four bold, fresh, refreshing flavors last summer. You can get real with Signature Lemonade, Strawberry Lemonade, Blueberry Lemonade, and Watermelon Lemonade, all with the taste of real fruit juice, okay? All flavors of Simply Spiked are crafted with 5% ABV and 5% real fruit juice, squeezed, then concentrated, and backed by popular demand. Four fan favorite beach flavors are now also part of the Simply Spike family, okay? Get juicy with signature peach, strawberry peach, kiwi peach, and mango peach. I told you summer's getting juicy. Go to drinksimplyspike.com slash idiots to find out how to get your hands on Simply Spike lemonade and new Simply Spike peach. That's drinksimplyspike.com slash idiots. Flavored beer, naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Simply Spiked Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate responsibly. Simply Spiked is a trademark of the Simply Orange Juice Company. Now let's get back to the show. Hezzy! Let's do it, baby! You got church announcements? I do, I do, I do. Yes. Um, Long Island. Long Island, Long Island, Long Island. COVID canceled a show of ours, so I said I'm coming back to the Paramount, man. We're recording this on a Tuesday. We posted a, a show up at the Paramount right there. Um, you guys went crazy. This is awesome, amazing. We've added three more shows. So right now, I'm telling you, we're at four. We're going to keep on adding shows as long as you keep buying them. TheAndrewSchultz.com for tickets. If the pre-sale is still on while this is coming out, uh, out the pre-sale code is Andrew. You get it from my website. Uh, also, if you couldn't get tickets to the Toronto shows, we're adding uh, Windsor, Ontario, and we're adding Niagara Falls. Uh, those are both drivable, so make sure you go get those tickets. Tickets are up for pre-sale right now. Pre-sale code is Andrew, TheAndrewSchultz.com. Make sure you go grab those. And uh, yo, Europe, thank you for selling out the show. We're trying to look into adding another one in Manchester. I'll keep you posted on that one. And still some tickets left for Dublin, so make sure you go get those. TheAndrewShow.com. Thank you guys so much. The Life Tour begins. Word. Uh, I got a few church announcements. Uh, thank you to everybody who constantly continues to support the Black Effect. Uh, we got a few new podcasts that we launched. Of course, the It's Up There podcast with Looney. Make sure you subscribe to that. Um, also, my man Damon John. Yes, Damon John from Shark Tank. He has a podcast on the Black Effect called uh, That Moment. A uh, really dope podcast. He sits down with different people from different industries, and they talk about that moment where they knew you know, they had something. Oh, that's fire. You know what I mean? So, you know, Damon is a great... Uh, great com- premise. Yeah, great conversation. He's a great conversationalist, and he's a person who's had a few that moments in his life, so he knows what he's talking about. Also, make sure you go out there and grab uh, Invisible Generals. That is the book from my man Doug Melville. It is the next release coming out on Black Privilege Publishing. It tells the amazing true story of America's first black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen, man. So if you like stories about uh, hidden figures, make sure you go out there and pre-order Invisible Generals by my man Doug Melville. It'll be out um, uh, November. I can't remember the exact date, but it's available for pre-order right now, but it'll be out in November. And I got to salute Uh, My guy, Kevin Hart, you know, we have our company, SBH Productions, at Audible this week. We are dropping another Audible original. If you, we, Finding Tamika was our first, Summer 85 was our second. This week, we're dropping our first audio scripted comedy you know, uh, some Finding Tamika was a documentary. Some of 85 was more documentary style. This is actual sitcom style. And it is Unleash for Love, starring my good sister, Alicia Renee. Ooh. That's right. Salute to Alicia Renee, written by uh, Sarita Wesley. Uh, it stars Pretty V. It stars Logan Browning from Dear White People. It stars uh, Lamorne Morris from uh, The New Girl. Uh, it stars Jasmine Guy, that's right, the OG Jasmine Guy, Kadeem Hardison, uh, Nina Parker is on there, Jess Hilarious is on there, Naeem Lynn, Portia Williams, uh, Giselle Bryant, Rome Green, Greg Reed, great cast. It will be available this 
Thursday, July 20th. If you're listening to this on a Thursday, it's available today on Audible. Go check it out. Tell me what you think. Make sure you leave a rating on Audible, man. I'm very interested uh, to see how this one will be received because, you know, Alicia is a longtime friend of mine. Used to be my neighbor when we all lived in uh, Hackensack, New Jersey in uh, Prospect Towers. Me and Alicia Renee and, and Roxy. Man, those were the good old simple From, days. Uh... 106 yeah, Park? Yeah, 106 Park, yeah. We used to all, we used to go to church together. We used to, speaking of cable television, I had cable. Alish did not, but Alish had the food. <laughs> she so brought food? Before, yeah, it's before my, my, my wife moved up here, so Alish would, Alish would bring down some food and we'd watch True Blood on Sundays or whatever the poppin' HBO show was on Sundays at that time, we would watch. At that, we was, it, was really, it was really True Blood around that time. So, salute to Alish, man. And you were driving into the city to... Uh to do Breakfast Club? Driving into the city to do Breakfast Club. Yeah, because I moved up, I moved, I moved back here in 2010. And when I moved back here in 2010, my, my, my wife and my daughter hadn't, didn't move back for another year. And I moved to Prospect Towers. And then we all lived in Prospect Towers. I, I lived there for a few years and Leash moved to LA. And then we eventually started renting a house. We rented a house. I had an apartment and then we rented a house. And then after I rented a house, I bought a house. But yeah, I'm proud of Leash, man. Unleashed with love. Out on uh, this July 20th. Now, let's get back to the show. Uh, Arizona Republican refers to black Americans as colored people in House floor debate. Can we hear it, Taylor? Unbelievably inspiring. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve. Okay? It has nothing to do with color Mr. Your Speaker. Skin. I'd like to be recognized to have the words colored people stricken uh, from the record. I find it offensive and very inappropriate. Can I amend my comments to people of color? It's consent. Mr. Speaker, to have the word stricken. I didn't ask for an amendment. What's interesting is, you know, uh, I was doing a little reading yesterday. And uh, it was saying how colored is usually considered offensive, but it was adopted in the U.S. by emancipated slaves as a term of racial pride after the end of the American Civil War. It was rapidly replaced from the late 1960s as a self-designation by black and later by African American, although it is retained in the name of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. That's my only thing. Like, you know, I, I, you know, I have no problem when people tell me something is offensive. My only issue is just like, well, if it's offensive and it's, you know, it's been around for a hundred years, why do we have organizations named after what we call, what we say is offensive? Bro, you can say people of color. That's what I said. They got mad at me because they was like, you don't know the difference between people of color and colored people? What, what is the difference? I just feel like it's better grammar. Like, if you can't say retarded people, can you say people of retard? <laughs> That's a great point. Just, Don't y'all bleep that either. I want that. We need to have this discussion. I just, God damn it. Like, I want to know if, that. If, if that's the, if That's you can say any offensive word as long as you say of before it, if that's the rule, it's going to be open season. Now I looked. I, I, people I, of retardation. There no. are people of retardation. People of retard. Now I did see that too. It there was an article. Nice. Of, it does sound yeah, nicer. Yeah, right? People of retard. Shit. I, I, I read that too. The difference between colored people and people of color. Um, the phrase colored people peaked in books published in 1970. Uh, people of color reached its apex in 2003. But the phrase people of color is not new. In fact, uh, an act to prohibit the importation of slaves into any port or place within the jurisdiction of the United States was signed in 1807, which applied to any Negro, mulatto, or person of color. So it indicates that the term was well enough established to be used in the text of legislation. So to me, if you're reasoning that, uh, you know, colored people is offensive is because it's old. I want to know how come people of color is offense, considered offensive either? I'm just confused. I just don't know. That's all I'm asking. I'm just asking questions here. I'm not sitting here trying to give any you're statements. You're not saying you're right. No. We just need to know. I just want to have the conversation. Yeah. That's it. And if everybody's telling me colored people is offensive and white people can't use it, then how come the NAACP hasn't changed their name? We should make them change their name. I, I, or you should just put of before things. Like when your wife is acting up, you know what I mean? You just... <laughs> <laughs> that don't work. Sweetheart, that don't work. You're being a little bit of a... Son of a bitch. A woman of... 
<laughs> okay, believe that. Yeah. Just believe that. <laughs> just say, if that's the trick, just throw the of there. Could you stop? Lisa, is that a bad word? No. Yes, I it is. It's definitely, a, it's, it's definitely a, a... What's it's, the worst way to call a vagina for black people? Like, stink? What's, no, no, not the... <laughs> 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 what? what? For any person, that ain't just black. Any, any, any human with a vagina, that's the worst thing you can say what about What is it. the worst thing black people call a vagina? Not the smell of it, like the name for it. But pussy's good. Let me, like... It's not a black... We can't reduce vagina to a black thing. No, I'm saying really white know. people say... You don't say that. Oh. <laughs> but so, no, 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 you're not calling the vagina that. You're calling the person that. Yeah. Yeah. You're calling a person that. Yeah, but in in like Great Britain. It's just like saying pussy. I guess pussy. You pussy. But in Great Britain, they'll say the word c like they'll 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 say it, be like, hello. Why don't you why don't you moisten up your c for me, please? <laughs> oh, so it's like a thing. It's like <laughs> That's how they talk dirty out there. Hello, lass. Why don't you <laughs> why don't you get some suds up in your c lips for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? Hello, loss. Hello, loss. I don't know, man. I just want. I, it's I, a bit dry on your loss. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe run some laps or something before we get to smushing loss. So you can use it in that context, right? I don't think so. Yes, in the context he just used. It. I don't think so. He's man. referring to the vagina as because it does mean vagina. You just can't call somebody that. Yeah, you can talk about. Yeah. Right. Oh, did you forget your undies? Your c is hanging down from your <laughs> skirt. So what's more offensive to call somebody pussy or? Oh, calling someone a pussy. But is it the same thing? No, it's fire. Is like alpha and pussy is beta. <laughs> like, if like, oh, you're not going on a roller coaster, you pussy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah, yeah. punch me in my face, you. Damn. Right. So like, it's yeah, like yeah, a positive yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so you can yeah. call it. That means you're a boss, bitch. That's boss, bitch. <laughs> I mean, if you want it to be, because you can flip it if you want it to be. Let's see. Let's see. Is y'all okay, flipping? What are the meanings of c vulgarism? Generally referring to the female genitalia. C in the gang. Minor internet. That's a group? There's a group called c in the gang? Hmm. I guess. I think uh, a c was like the sheath for us, uh, a, a knife or a sword, right? Words matter, bro. So you would put it in, which makes sense, because if the sword is the dick, you would slide it into yeah. the yeah, 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 yeah. But it has like a you know a meaning that makes sense, you know. I don't know. But man. women get all <laughs> about it, so we can't fucking say that word. Sorry, sorry. I don't know. Listen, this picture. This is the most amazing picture I've seen in a long time. What is this? E, I, I've told y'all this before on this podcast. Y'all motherfuckers think I'd be playing. EJ Johnson is incredible, bro. Which one is EJ? Which EJ, one is the, EJ? The most fabulous motherfucker in like, that picture. Come on, bro. Okay. EJ looked like he averaged 20, 10, and 11, all right? Who is who is magic, okay? <laughs> forget, the, forget the greatest point guard of all time. Who, look, who looks like they're the greatest point guard of all time in that picture? Uh, I don't know. EJ by far. I don't know if he looks like the greatest point guard of all time. EJ looks incredible, yo. Let me tell you something, man. You got to you gotta see EJ in person to understand the elegance of EJ Johnson. You ain't never seen EJ in person. I saw him in person. You did? Where at? L.A. Mm. I saw him in L.A. too. I saw him a few times. I mean, I've seen him at award shows and stuff, but I walked into a juice bar randomly one time. What? You don't say her. Her. Him? Huh? What is it? It's E.J. Johnson. Yeah, but does she identify as a him? her or him? Who, I, EJ what don't do identify, identify as, as no her. Are you sure? I'm almost positive E.J. is not. They dress like they identify I mean, as a her. Yeah. yeah man, that my, E.J. is fly. Okay. All I, I walked into a juice ball one time, man. I was like, who is this well-dressed person in the juice ball? And he was dressed in, like, workout clothes, but it still looked fly. Look rich. And he turned around. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, EJ. You said what's up? Yeah, you got him right. I said what's up to EJ, man. Dap him up. You dap You're him up. you damn right. you damn right. I mean, I've seen EJ gracefully floating through the, uh, the, the, the MTV Movie Awards with high heels on, <laughs> bro. Like, he had on some, like, shoes that had, like, these super high heels at his size, gracefully. Only person I've seen move in heels better is Beyonce. And wow. she was dancing. And Beyonce ain't six foot six, you know, two plus 
whatever EJ is, yep. okay? And when EJ's feet would hurt, EJ sat down and had somebody unzip his goddamn boots and rub his feet and put him back on when he was ready to start walking. Ain't no way. Fuck with me, you know I got it. Ain't no way. Okay? Salute to EJ, man. Play could with EJ you, if you, you want to. Could you handle that right there? Hmm? Could you handle that? You always got to take things somewhere else, man. He's talking about one-on-one. Basketball? Yeah. A bus EJ ass. <laughs> What about in sex? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to clean it up. <laughs> Moving on. Move, move on, Taylor. Could you handle Taylor. that? Could you handle all Taylor, that? Taylor, move on. Could Taylor. you handle all that? <laughs> Taylor, this was funny as hey. shit, too. JT on, beats bro. with Little Uzi Vert's a Les side chick. No, you know what I want to ask you about? Go to fucking, um, yeah, go, to that. go to Shania Twain. Uh, Shania I've been Twain. to Shania Twain's uh, museum. Really? Yep. She got a museum? She got a museum way up north in Canada. No, Carrie, the, the Carrie Underwood. She was performing. Remember she was performing? Are you saying Schneider Twain because we just look at EJ? What do you mean? Man, I feel like a boy. <laughs> I don't know anything that about that. Yeah. That was good. Wait, you no, had, that was you good. You don't know that song from Shania Twain? No. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you've heard it. If you've if you heard it, the the man, co- you know the, like a go to the country singer who kicked so. the people out of the, the concert. She got a show like that for but real. That was, bust that man! I feel like a woman. That was a good. Like a that was a himself. good bar, though, right? Out, that was a good you know bar. I mean? shooting. We still shooting. Hard, you know what I mean? I don't know what he's talking. Man, yeah. Taylor, why do like you use woman. Twitter as a search engine? No. What's that dance everybody doing? They got this move in it. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, yeah, and then they go. Go to, <laughs> go to <laughs> country sour. singer. Can we do that? I pulled my side back. <laughs> I just pulled my side I back. I want to know what you think about this as a performer. All right, let me see. Country singer mm-hmm. kicks people. No. What? Shania Twain. Shania Twain. Type in, type in um, country singer kicks people out of show. Shania kick people Who'd out I of give show? Donkey, who'd I give donkey to today? Jason Aldean? Name some country singers. She got, uh, this, Lil Nas uh, X. Um... Fuck. She's named after the rights. Uh, what's the right? Miranda rights? Is her name Miranda rights? Oh, Miranda Wright? uh, Lambert. Uh, the shorty took a selfie yeah. at the Miranda Lambert Boom. joint. <laughs> tell me, show me Carrie Underwood. Tell me Carrie Underwood. Show me Carrie Underwood. Nah, nah, nah. I don't get white people right on purpose, yo. Yo, that's funny. What they did to Master P and Lufa Vandross? What they do? They said Master P was Luther Vandross on Google, yo. So I refused to get Sometimes any of Sometimes y'all look right. similar. That's how yeah. I feel about fucking Dolly Parton. Every time I'm on this, <laughs> show me what Dolly Parton did. Show me how Dolly Parton kicked them out. Now listen to this shit. What do you think of this, yo, as a performer? Let me see. Let me see. Yes, that's it. Something bound to fall apart. I'm going to stop right here for a sec, Danny. I'm sorry. Selfie and not listening to the song, it's pissing me off a little bit. Why Carrie Underwood tripping, yo? I don't like it. I don't know. That's fucked up, yo. We're here to hear some country music tonight. I'm singing from country music. Why, yo? The fans left too, by the way. Because they got what they needed. Shall we start again? Would you do that to a fan? Well, it's different for you because you're comedy. If it, someone it, 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 in the middle different. of my you're show comedy, stood comedy. up and took you don't a count. selfie. You don't count. You don't count. You don't count. You're comedy. Yeah. Co- okay. Comedians, I totally get it. But this is what the concert experience is for singers and musicians nowadays. Here's the thing. If you saw what was happening, it wasn't one person. It was like six of them in a fucking line. The, their flash is going off. Someone else is taking the picture. And they look like they were standing on like a walkway section. Yeah. If the, if the other video shows it more, it's if they're there for a while, like she was saying for a while, and look at that. Six fucking people, there's multiple sh- shots, like they're blocking other people's views, other people are distracted. Uh, okay. Well, I think it's a way to handle it then. How about tell them, hey man, enjoy the moment. I mean, I'll be Why don't honest, y'all put your phones down and enjoy the moment? 100%, but uh, the other way is like you have your fucking security on that ass. Yeah. Like, that too? The, you need your security on that ass. Yeah, I'm with yeah. that. Because I'm sure she had a million people take pictures of her like this, mm-hmm. film her, et cetera. She, those people are distracting other people from the show. 
You're right. So I, I, I don't blame her. And, I just it's like, and it looks weird because they have their back to her. Yeah, so many people that have like, their back to her, even though they just want her to be in the picture. That's yeah. why they're doing it. I just but. want Loretta Lynn to be nicer. You know what she, I'm saying? She should, <laughs> you should. Be nicer. You went with a deep cut right Sorry. there. What? You went with a deep cut. I know some country singers. Do you? Yeah, George Gay. You know George Gay, right? No, who's George Gay? George Gay. I don't know. <laughs> you know George Gay. He's I famous don't know. as fuck. You can keep saying the name. I don't know George, who George Gay, Gay is. George Gay, bro. George Gay. The country singer. <laughs> Google George Gay. Why? It's going to come <laughs> up with my search <laughs> and shit. <laughs> George Gay, the country singer, yo. Stop it, stop it. My Google search. You tell me there's not a country singer named George Gay? He said George Michael. Look, who typed the country singer George? <laughs> Somebody put in George Gay. All you get is a bunch of George Michael. No, man. Pull up country singers then. I put just type in country singers. There's a George Gay. Yo. There's no George Gay, bro. George H. Gay Jr. And he country wasn't a country singer. singer. He was a Naval pilot. officer or yeah. something like that. Carrie Underwood, Jason Allen. George Strait. <laughs> God. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. I stayed in it. I stayed in it until somebody got it. I stayed in it. So. Oh, man, that was good. That was good. I stayed in it until somebody got it. So. I hate him, bro. I hate him. I hate him with all my heart. I hate him. Let's pay some bills, man. Um, salute to Audible. Uh, Audible, salute to you. Proudly celebrating 50 years of hip-hop, 50 years yes. of culture that birthed the most prolific storytellers of our time. Respect the movement, respect the moment, celebrate storytellers. Hear brand new hip-hop memoirs, podcasts, and exclusive musical performances on Audible. Free all summer long, like new volumes from Audible's groundbreaking words, plus music series, including Snoop Dogg's From the Streets to the Suites, Yasin Bey's A Dynamic Career in Communications, and Little Kim's The Audacity of Little Kim. DJ Drama's Gangsta Grill, Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Featuring the mixtape Produced legend. by WTF Media Produced by WTF Alex Media, media. Uh, thank you. Weezy the, Media That's right Salute <laughs> to Weezy Salute to Kenya um, it features the mixtape legend in conversation with hip hop greats like Two Chains, Lil Wayne, Wiz Khalifa, Jeezy, Ti, and Pharrell. I'm definitely uh, checking that one out. Binge worthy Audible original series like The Greatest Day that takes listeners inside the making of hip hop's greatest photograph, XXL Magazine's iconic 1998 cover that saw over 100 of the day's greatest hip hop artists assembled from one legendary image. Chuck D's, can you dig it? about how a gang peace treaty in the Bronx set the stage for the rise of hip-hop culture are the mother load, featuring hip-hop heavies. I can't even think of heavies without thinking about <laughs> Andrew saying some okay. unfucking cultured crazy shit. Chuck <laughs> D's, can you dig it? About how a gang peace treaty in the Bronx set the stage for the rise of hip-hop culture. Uh, Art of Mother Load, I told y'all that, featuring hip-hop heavies like MC Light, Angie Martinez, retracing the history and future of hip-hop through the lens of its most influential female contributors. Hear unforgettable hip-hop originals like these and more essential stories on Audible. Listen free. Go to audible.com slash forever. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure your dick is hard. Uh, ooh. <laughs> you know shoop, what I'm shoop. Saying? I got to make sure shoop. that shit is solid. Matter of fact, Blue Chew is making sure it's solid. Same active ingredients inside Viagra or Seattle. But this is the true. This is the one we rock with. This one you're gonna keep that girl that you're with happy. What's up with okay? that thing? Nice and happy. She wanna feel that stallion. Ooh, no Meg. No Meg. All third leg. All third leg. <laughs> Point is, you're gonna get your first month free. All you gotta do is pay five dollars shipping. Think about that. Best dick of your life delivered to your doorstep. For free, $5 shipping. All you got to do is go to bluechew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS. You are welcome. Now let's get back to the show. Oh, Fabulous criticizes female rap for being too one-dimensional. Fabulous, uh, he says that uh, female... Oh, he said Fabulous weighs in on the state of female rap saying that he feels it's too one-dimensional and wants to hear more perspectives from the ladies in hip-hop. Um, Fab posted... What did he say? said that he's happy to see so many women doing their thing in hip-hop. He'd love if some of these strong women chose to rap about their life experiences a little more. I get what Fab is saying. There is a lot of booty hole rap. And what I call booty hole, booty hole bars is a lot of you know women rapping about their booty holes. But I think that 
a lot of those women are just doing that because it works. Yeah, they gravitate to what's popular. <clears throat> yeah, they gravitate towards what's popular, but if you dig a little deeper, these women do rap about other things. I, I've been on record over the last four or five years. My favorite rapper, period, male or female, is Rhapsody. Can't wait for Rhapsody's new project. Um, Rhapsody definitely don't have booty hole bars. But even the girls that have booty hole bars, they can rap. Like, I was listening to uh, uh, Emery Jones has a mixtape out called Humble Souls that he did in conjunction with Puma. First of all, it's fire. The only way to even get the tape is you have to actually buy the sneakers. Mm. And when you buy the sneakers, there's a chip inside <laughs> the sneaker that you can get the mixtape. And um, I think even the, 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 whatever this is on the shoe, what do you call this, this piece right here? This piece is an aux cord on the, on the fucking shoelace. <laughs> Amazing technology. Um, but he's got a song on there and it's Rhapsody and uh, Kent the Man. Kent the Man is her name. Ken the Man. Is it Ken the Man or Kent the Man? I think it's Ken the Man. Ken the Man. I've heard Ken before, and I thought Ken was just one of those booty hole bar rappers. But on this record, she's snapping. Like Her name is Ken the Man? Ken the Man. Ken the Man. And she's snapping on this record. And I was like, damn, I didn't even know she could do that. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's the same thing even with somebody like a Cardi or a Glorilla or a Lotto. Yeah, they can rap about sex and everything else, but they can rap about other shit too. You know, you just got to dig deeper than just what you might hear on the radio or that single that they they have out. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of these, these female rappers, I can't say that a lot of them are just being one dimensional. I just think it sounds like that because we're hearing so many singles yeah. from these women and it's their single and their single may have that 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 drive. It's in. maybe our fault too. It's what we want to listen to. Yeah. If we gravitate towards it, that that's the thing that we want to digest. I listen. I, 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 I can't say that and act like I'm against booty hole boss. I like booty. You know what I'm saying? Boss. I grew up on Lil Kim saying it used to be scared of the dick, not throw lips to the shit, handle it like a real bitch. You know what I mean? I grew up on Foxy Brown. I grew up on Trina. I grew up on Jackie O. Like I, that shit don't bother me. You know what I mean? TLC. China White say I don't lick no clits. Or, what you trying to say? Trying to say I don't lick no clits and suck no nuts. <laughs> Oh, let me get China White's bar right. Bar. China White don't lick no uh, clicks. Who would be the equivalent of like um, a Drake or a J. Cole, somebody who has immense success but uh, isn't doing booty hole bars? You mean in the history of hip hop? No, no, like right now as female rappers. China White don't suck no dick or lick no nuts. Okay. Bitch, I hit licks and flip bricks every two hours, switch whips to keep the peoples off me. What you know about that no doze and coffee? Fire, bro. You know what I'm saying? China white, goddammit. What about, what about shoop, shoop, peru, shoop, peru, shoop, peru, peru, peru. Ooh. Booty hole boss. Do you know that song? Yes, it's the set. This is, I do know that no, song. No, 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 no. What is that? How does that shit go? I used to know that shit. What, shoop? Shoop, <laughs> by word for word. Only the girl part. When the dude start rapping, I was like, I'm, I'm good. Let's see. <laughs> Let's pull it up. Let's pull up salt and pepper shoop. Shoop, shoop, peru. Salt. Shoot and bad, let me see if, let me see if, if Schultz really knows this shit. Let me take this back shit. to the subject that uh, sex. <laughs> make you get hot, make you work up a sweat. Why you don't come out to that? To Malou, my darling. Why I'm you don't not, come out to that? But I thought for you. Bet your bottom uh, dollar here you I go, best. Here I go, no, here, here I go, go again. again. Girls, what's my weakness? Man! Okay, then, chillin', chillin', chillin'. Minding, minding my, my business, business your soul. Around, and I couldn't believe this. I, I swear, I, I said, said, my niece, my witness. The, the brother had it going on with something kind of wicked, wicked. Had to kick it. I'm not shy, so I asked for the digits. so we don't get flagged. Cut that so we don't get flagged. Keep going. Damn, is this pepper part? You should be doing salt part. I should be I doing do pepper. Both. Oh, no, you I'm, are pepper. Shit. And you salt. But I know this one better, but let's keep okay, going. Okay, go. Uh, uh, lick him like a lollipop. Should be licked. Came, Came to, to my, my senses and, and I chilled for a bit. Don't, don't know, know how, how you do, do the voodoo, voodoo that, that you do. So well, that's a spell. Hell, Hell makes me want to shoop, shoop, shoop. Shoop, baby. Shoop, baby. Shoop, baby. Don't say I don't love bitches. Don't say I don't love bitches, yo. Hold on, keep going. We got that second verse. You want that second verse? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, you're packed and you're stacked. Especially in the back, brother, one. And say the like a butt like that. Wanna thank your mother, mother for a butt, butt like, like that. that? The ad lib is thanks, mom. Yeah. Give me. Wait, <laughs> Can I get it? some fries with, with that, that shake, shake, shake booty? If it, looks could kill you, would. The Uzi, I'm a shotgun. Bang! What's up with that thing? I wanna know, Charla. 
How does it hang? Shame, <laughs> hold up. Mr. Mr. Lover. Lover. Like Prince said, you're, you're a, a sexy, sexy mother. mother. I like him. Real wild, b-boy, b-boy style, by the mile. Smooth black skin with, with a, a smile. smile. Bright as the sun. I, I want to have some, some fun. fun. Let me get some of that yum, yum, yum. chocolate chip, honey, honey dip. dip. Can I get a scoop? Baby, take a ride in my coupe. You, you make, make me want to shoot, shoot, bad wow. Shoot, bad <laughs> Shoot, bad <laughs> <laughs> bad <laughs> <laughs> bad Is there another verse? That's crazy. Everybody needs a hype man like Sean. Like... <laughs> So I told you, I know the whole song. Salute to Salt, Pepper, and Spinderella. Fucking legends, wow. goddamn. Legends. 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 That Who's is. That's an idiot. That's crazy. Come on, how did y'all not know Shoop? That was the number one song on like Come TRL on, or some shit. Bunch of uncultured colors. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do let's do some asking idiots. No, but you didn't answer my question. Who's um a version like What's the female? Yeah, what's the female? Um well, well no, 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 no. They're, 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 see, see, when you say that, I can't make this statement without telling people we can't have the accolades. We're just talking about skill sets. Right? So you you're talking about skill sets. Nah, not just with the skill sets, somebody who has a skill set, but also makes good music where people are tuning into non booty hole rap because that's that's what i feel is the disconnect it's like the ones that are, aren't doing the booty hole rap their music isn't hitting like that you're right um i feel like the I last mean, rhapsody, to me, rhapsody to me competes with all of them you know i think i think lyrically rhapsody is up i, I my personal opinion rhapsody is up there with kendrick i feel personally. like the last one like that was lauren hill yeah. yeah, but I said history. But you, you said now. I, no, I, no, I'm yeah. saying now. I'm saying the last one we had that wasn't making booty hole rap, but that was making bangers. I feel is Lauren Hill. If you're not gonna do booty Eve. hole rap, oh yeah. Eve, Eve, yeah, Eve. you're right. She also right. had booty hole rap. Nah, not really. No, not nah, her shit was just like, I'm nicer rapping than you. I'll fuck yeah. you up. Like, all right, yeah, fair. Yeah. But if you do booty hole rap, MC Light, Queen Latifah. I mean, you, you, Moni Love. Like, it's. A, I mean, it's been a bunch of women rappers. Yo, I realize I only know women rap songs by heart. Shit, be slapping, bro. I pretty much me only X, know. Me X was hard. Gangsta Boo was hard. Um, Yo, the brat. China man. White was hard. I don't give a fuck. I, I love China White. I don't yeah. know why China White ain't take off like she should. China White was hard. I'm just talking about somebody now. I don't. No. Um, I mean, rap cities don't. I don't know, man. I mean, I think what happens is like if you're gonna not do booty hole rap, you need to build a community, and they just gotta work more on building that community. What about like, J. Cole is not doing a booty hole rap, mm-hmm. but J. Cole has built a community for himself. He's has fr- fans have an identity. They come out. So they're You're down right. to digest whatever art he puts out. Mm-hmm. Same with, uh, same with what's his face? Uh, uh, Kendrick. Kendrick built a community. He built, like, a, a listener, a viewership for his content. Mm-hmm. But the thing with booty hole rap is there's already so much desire for it that you could be someone who's maybe not as famous and then throw a booty hole rap song out there and then people are like, ooh, I like this thing because I like booty hole rap. Yeah. It's like a gangster, <laughs> like booty, booty it's hole a gangster film. It's like a gangster film. Like you could have a, a lesser known person put out a film about some gangster shit and we'd be like, ooh, I like it because I like gangster things. Yeah. Gotcha. Nyla. Uh-huh. Who are some uh, women that don't do booty hole bars right now that are successful? Like women that don't just rap about their booty hole. Of course we know Rhapsody, but Rhapsody and Chica. Chica. Who is Chica? I don't I'm not familiar with Chica. Chica, she's like she used to be really popular on Twitter. And Oh, that's uh, the one who has like a kidney infection or something now? I'm not sure, possibly. She she's heavy set. She's signed to Warner, but with, she's good. With the dreads? Yeah. That's the one who got into it with T.I. and Tiny them over her kid or something? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know all the drama. Oh, so just that damn, is this two? That's what I'm saying. No, I feel like Bia doesn't really make booty. Oh, movies. Bia is fire, bro. But she only had that one? Like Bia makes with Cole. Rap. Yeah. That song is great. London. Oh, hold on. I got. A, I can answer your question, too. Doja Cat. She's Doja a Cat does singer. both. She's not a No, rapper. Doja Cat, she Doja sings rap. and raps. Doja and raps. she sells records. Those can rap her ass off. That new song Doja got called Attention is fire. She's a really fire talented fire. artist. She is, but y'all really look talented. at Doja Cat as a rapper? I yes, look at her as a I look oh. at Doja Cat as a rapper. What'd you say? Okay. You look at Drake as a rapper? Dochi. Yeah. Dochi. Oh, Dochi. Dochi too. I don't know that one. Like, Dochi, okay, Dochi if, signed the TDE. If Drake is rapping, then Doja's right. rapping too. Okay. Got it now. Right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Yes, Doja. Yo, Doja's talented, man. 
Like that girl is fucking oozing talent. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> no, who those are Listen, her new song, Attention, mm. snaps. She sounds like Ladybug from Diggable Planets on that shit. Fire. Fire, fire. What did you say? She sounds like <laughs> she sound like Ladybug from Diggable Planets on that. What is that? Diggable Planets. You remember Diggable Planets? I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. Is it a female rapper? Because that's yes. I only know female rappers. Yeah, she's female word rapper. She's Ladybug a woman. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Want a man, want a man, want a man, want a mighty good man. Okay, this yeah, is a good one. I hear JoJo says. Yo, I it, know that one word for word too. <laughs> Every song about wanting dick, I know. <laughs> 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 my boy, it's my boy right there. Um, I'm him. Jojo says, "Is it more That's my boy right there?" <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. That's my boy right there. <laughs> Is it more important to have patience or confidence? Confidence. Be confident enough to wait. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good confident one. Confident enough to wait. Confidence. I like where you're going. I like, I like, I like that. I never thought about it like that, you but I like that. Can't have patience without confidence. Can't have patience without you confidence. Can't like being patient. I agree. Is the epitome of confidence in a lot of times, in a lot of ways. Like just knowing, hey, I don't have to do this right here because I'm nice and I'm I gonna go get it. Yeah. I agree. They're one in the same. They de they yeah. definitely are one in the same because because what Andrew said. Either way you flip it, it's the same thing. You have to have, if you have ultimate confidence, you'll have patience because you know eventually your time will come. And if you have but. patience, you're having patience because you're confident in the fact that your time Welcome. will come. Now, there's some people who I can have. So I, get, I, I know you're about to go, Alice, because I can see this, too. You can have because I'm thinking of Kanye right now. Right. Who had all the confidence in the world, but was extremely impatient because he knew I am the one. Y'all don't see me. Mm -hmm. You know uh, what I'm saying? But I wouldn't look at patience in that way. Like if you're I, I look at patience in this. Like, you know you're going to be great. Some record label comes up, offers you a shitty deal. No patience and no confidence is, I got to take it because I might not get this again. True. Confidence is True. going, no, I'm good. I'm going to get my True. fucking fire deal. True. But being impatient in that Kanye scenario where it's like, hey, I'm ready to go right now. I don't know if that's impatience. I don't know if that's, I'm not willing to wait anymore because nobody's, I guess they were telling him to wait, but I don't know if that's impatience. That's just knowing the time is now and the time is to go. But having patience with no confidence, it's like, I can just see you you'll just- You'll never do anything. You don't do yeah, shit. You'll never I don't do think, anything. I don't, you I, need I, the confidence. Something's gonna come, point. but I don't know if it's, I'm worth something coming. Like, that's- To Andrew's point, I don't think you can have patience with, without confidence. It's Cause, hard. Cause, cause you, you, you're, you're, not, you're not patient, you're scared. Yeah, yeah. you're scared that's to death. You're like, what the fuck, what's going to happen? Patience is, I know something great is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just a matter of time. Mm. If you don't have confidence, you're like, oh my God. That's what that's anxiety. You being yeah. anxious as a motherfucker. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, Eric G, if aliens come to live with us on Earth, who is the first person race who would procreate? Oh, come on, that's easy. Who would have sex with the aliens? Yeah. Who the first the, it says who is the first person race who would procreate? Oh, Mexicans. For sure. Jesus, come on. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Why not? <laughs> Oh, oh, Louis, I like it. Look at that. Come on. Come on, look man. Look at that. Hey, hey, on, what's man. up? Hey. Hey, hey, come here. Hey, hey, come here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we both have Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Hey. She don't, she don't. She don't got nice titties, but uh, she, she got a lot of head. You know? <laughs> Maybe because right. I speak Spanish. Scroll up. Taylor, what else we got? Let's do a couple more. No, go down with that. Go down. Go down. Pause. Taylor. Fucking Taylor. Fucking Taylor. Ooh. Fucking Taylor. Already ask him all these questions. I'm not doing that. That's a crazy question, Carl Marty. You're basically asking, name, he said, name four people you would pick to join you on the Ocean Gate side. Hey, why? Yo. Exactly. Oh. Like, why? You're saying four people I want to die with? That's great. Um. Sha uh, I be busting stupid dope moves that Charlotte was tripping when he said Nas isn't on the top of the greatest storyteller list. That's not what I said. What I said was, I said that there's good storytellers and then there's great elite storytellers. I think Nas is a good, great storyteller. I don't think Nas is... He told a story in reverse. Yeah, I think he's in Rewind was crazy. It's That's a great elite. story, but he, it's not on the level of something big has done. I think... 
It's not Nas's on the level storytelling of ability is his done. greatest talent. Yeah. Nah, I disagree with that. I mean, Nas also just got bars for days. Like, Nas is fantastic. If I yeah. put it like if I did a top ten storytellers, Nas would be in there, but I was doing like a top five. Who's the best storyteller of all time to you? Biggie Smalls. Notorious B.I.G. And Biggie was so good at storytelling, we don't even realize that majority of his work was stories. <laughs> Yo, did you see Yayo and uh, DJ, wait, what's his name? Uh, DJ e DJ EFN. 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 From yeah, Chan. DJ EFN. Is, and by is way, it EFN? EFN. It's EFN. People so, act like that's not a good debate. But he goes, <laughs> did you see Yayo? <laughs> Ray, yeah, yo, caught it in slow motion. He's like, "Who do you think is best storyteller all the time?" He goes, "Ice Cube." He goes, "He goes, all right." Wait, what? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. You think Ice Cube is the greatest storyteller? Better than Big? Better than what? <laughs> Better than Big? Uh, they were screaming on one another. I love that so New York because you don't even make an argument; you just get loud, yeah, and that's loud. your argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and they both just got loud yeah. with one another. Yeah, I think. Um, to me, storytelling rap is the highest level of rap. Because I think when you okay. have, like we were talking about earlier with movies and everything, we just want a great story. If you're able to tell a great story through music, like you're just a phenomenal artist to me. Mm. Like people, okay. anybody can make songs, but to make a great story, beginning, middle, to end, I definitely got Cube high on that list. I got Biggie high on that list. I got Slick Rick high on that list. I got motherfucking um, Scarface yep. high on that list. You have to have Cool G Rap. Cool G Rap, I, I, I got yeah. Cool G on the same tier as Nas. And that's a, I'm not saying, this is a great tier. What about not, TLC? <laughs> <laughs> what about Jay-Z? Jay Z's on the tier with Nas and Cool G to me. He's, nah, they, these are great storytellers. Like I love Jay Z's story records, but I feel Nas' story records are like one level up. Like if you rap in a that. song backwards, bro, I'll give that, you that, the talent, that shit is Amber crazy, Fresh, bro. It was. I remember listening to that for the first time, going, I, I can't even believe that I just heard it. Yeah, I love Rewind. Nas has some stories that I love. I'm just saying, like if I took Biggie's ten greatest storytelling records. And put him up against Nas's ten greatest storytelling records. No, nobody's it's disputing. Nobody's disputing Biggie and Nas. I think Biggie yeah, yeah. is. You could argue the best. I mean, he's got unbelievable. Cube is up there too. Ice Cube is a really good storyteller. I know people run the, it was a good day, but then you got uh, yeah. my summer vacation. Um, oh man, I, he got a bunch of them. I can't think right now. But Ice Cube has some really great storytelling records. Scarface, the emotion that a Scarface makes you feel. I think that's what I'm lacking from a Nas. Nas tells good stories, but he's never taking me, never taking me anywhere emotionally. Mm. It's just a good story. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't tell me. Listen to uh, "Never Seen a Man Cry Till I Seen a Man Die." Tell me you don't shed a tear. Mm. You know what I mean? Listen to "Mind Playing Tricks on Me." The deepness, the richness of that record and the emotional, like they, you listen to that song, you can hear your anxiety. Mm. <laughs> you, can, you can hear your depression. You can hear your schizophrenia. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I love Nas, I love Nas. Nas is in my top five favorite rappers of all time. Um, I just don't have him on that. And it's not, it's not like it's a, a leaps and bounds. Yeah. I think Biggie is leaps and bounds. I think Face is leaps and bounds, you know. Ghostface is up there too. Kendrick is a great storyteller as well. He's a great storyteller, but he's, I'm, the guys I'm talking about are elite, man. When Biggie said he's the rap Alfred Hitchcock, like, come on, man. Mm. It's a different level. That's far. Um, last one. Oh, this is good. Brown Butter says, better big screen comedian, Eddie Murphy or Martin Lawrence? Oh, wow, that's good. Okay. Yo, the knee jerk is to say Eddie, but, but Martin has had some fucking hysterical dude blue streak phenomenal was hysterical life life great movie. both of them are in it both of them in that yeah the um, knee jerk is to go eddie and i love eddie and i'd probably say eddie but i'm also adding the stand-up into it because he's like you know one of my goats a thin line between love and hate martin got but martin was funny in movies bro i think i think you gotta go eddie because eddie just has more I guess yeah. when you add comedian to it, like you think funny, but I mean Eddie was funny and everything too. The reason I gotta go Eddie is because you know, you know Beverly Hills Cop was for Sylvester Stallone. 
I heard it was for somebody else. It was for Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And so Eddie came in there, and they was like, they didn't even really change anything. So all yeah. of the funny you see is just Eddie being Eddie funny. being Eddie, adding you know? the character work, That's doing what I'm all saying. that shit. Yeah. Like, and then you know, coming to America, boomerang. Oh yeah, he just got a he just got a trading lot places of was a real trading, trading places. Really big one. Really. You know, forty eight hours. I, I, I love Martin though. Martin is incredible too. Life is the one to me. So Martin got um, one, two of uh, the movie with Will Smith. Oh, Rush, not Rush. Um, bad Boys. Bad Boys. Yeah, yeah. One, Bad Boys. Two. I didn't see three. Bad Boys. But Bad Boys one was fucking amazing. Bad Boys two was good too. Bad Boys for Life was good. The one who played too. like all the family, different family characters. That's oh, Big Mama's Eddie. house. That's no, that was, that was Eddie. Yeah. Eddie did Nutty Professor. Oh. Eddie did Nutty Professor. You're thinking of Nutty Professor. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you yeah. can't fuck with Eddie, bro. Yeah, you can't. Eddie's different. 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 Eddie's different.